we're about to turn my microphone over. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. I hereby call this meeting to order. As we all know, we have a lot to accomplish today, uh, so I'll save most of my remarks for the end of the meeting when I hope we're uh, just providing acknowledgments on a job well done. To begin, we do have interpreters today to provide Spanish translation. Would you please introduce yourselves? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, my name is Mario Barajas, and together with my colleague, Carmen Cota, we will be serving as uh, interpreters for today. I'll now take a moment to introduce ourselves to our Spanish-speaking audience. Hola, buenos días, mi nombre es Mario Barajas, y junto con mi colega Carmen Cota, estaremos sirviéndoles como intérprete para la junta de hoy. Les pedimos como favor, si es que van a estar dando un comentario público, pedimos de que hablen lentamente, con claridad, y de esa manera podemos interpretarles lo que está diciendo de la manera más completa posible. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right, well, there will be public comment period today during item three on the agenda. I'm planning to reserve at least 30 minutes for public comments, but we'll again uh, decide the duration and time limit for each speaker based on the available time and number of individuals registered to speak. If you are attending in person and would, and would like to speak, you do need to sign up at the kiosk located at the entrance to council chambers before the call to the public item begins. If you are attending virtually or watching a recording and would like to speak at a future geo bond committee meeting, please know you'll need to register at least two hours prior to the start of the meeting and you may register to speak at phoenix.gov slash bond slash meetings. Well, our first agenda item is to approve the minutes from our meeting on September 16th. Would a subcommittee member please make a motion to approve the minutes? I make the motion to approve the minutes. Excellent. Do I have a second? Excellent. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Excellent. Moving to agenda item number two. As we all know, the critical task for today's meeting is to reach agreement on the rank ordered list of projects, including the amounts of money uh, recommended that will be put forward to the executive committee again as our overall recommendation. All subcommittees were instructed from the beginning that we have four meetings to accomplish uh, what we set out starting with our first meeting. I have requested an additional hour for today and I'm hopeful that we can uh, come to completion, come to consensus by the end of those three hours, if not sooner. Following our last meeting, staff did circulate a survey to committee members. And again, that survey was to uh, rank order our recommendations for the projects that we should be putting forward to the executive committee. And we'll be seeing the results of that survey today as a starting point for our deliberations. It's important for our subcommittee members as well as members of the public to know that when we're looking at the survey results, that is not our final recommendation. Again, it's a starting point for our deliberations uh, to eventually come to consensus on our rank order. As I mentioned, there will be a brief public comment period after reviewing the survey results. My intention is to reserve as much time as possible for the subcommittee to complete our work. I respectfully ask individuals speaking on behalf of organizations from whom we've already heard that you do please keep your comments concise. It's clear the needs in our community far exceed the available resources. We certainly appreciate your passion and dedication to the arts and culture community, and we certainly appreciate your participation in the process. I do believe it's having an impact and will have an impact again today. Before I turn it over to staff to share a presentation that they have prepared of some of the outstanding items and new information provided, as well as providing the results of the ranking exercise that again we completed as a subcommittee um, in, in recent days, I would like to provide a few more comments uh, related to hopefully an approach that you might um, be supportive of when we do get into deliberations. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has been kept up at night trying to figure out how do we, how do we rank order? How do we determine amounts for all of these really critical needs of our arts and culture community? How do we eliminate projects? How do we reduce funding? 
Well, as I've been staying up at night, I've, I've, been, I've been looking at the numbers, and I wanted to come in today with at least a wireframe of a plan to ask you all to possibly consider when we get into the deliberations process as a way to hopefully get us to consensus by the end of our meeting today. And here's the approach that I would um, like to ask you to consider, especially as we're hearing from staff in their presentation, when we're looking at the rank order of projects um, in the hopes that it will help us get to the amount that we need to get to. 56, approximately 56 million is the amount put forward in the critical needs study. That was the amount recommended by staff. When you look at the percentage, it's 11% of the 500 million. If all eight subcommittees received their equal slice, that would be 12.5%. At 56 million, 11%, 12.5% would get us up to about $62.5 million. We certainly respect the recommendations staff um, have put forward in the critical needs study, their recommendations to us, but as we all know, we've heard about new projects that could have, should have potentially gone to other subcommittees. Uh, parks and Rec, if a building, a program is managed out of Parks and Rec, a historic building to neighborhoods. So my approach, my strategy that I'm asking you to consider is should we increase the amount that we put forward as our recommendation to the executive committee closer to that 62.5 million? And when we hear from staff today, we crunch some of the numbers, it's actually feasible, it's actually realistic in order to pull in all the new projects we've heard from, um, the staff recommendations, as well as potentially moving from future needs into prioritized needs. So that's just the wireframe that I wanted to put out there to consider, again, as we um, will have time to ask questions after the staff presentation, then hear from members of the public, and from there begin our deliberations. Any questions, comments related to that? Um, do you need a motion? <laughs> do I need a motion? I'll turn to our staff leadership for, with that question. I think not necessarily at this time. I think you want to hear um, the comments and have the discussion before you decide if that's the direction you want to go, just to make sure that you hear all the information first. But again, I think the idea was to get that in people's minds to see if that's some direction you wanted to go when you get to the deliberation, and then you can make it at that point. Well, I, I uh, Madam Chairman, yeah, I'm certainly willing to wait, but I doubt very much that uh, there's going to be people asking for less. Uh, so I think the emotion now would be appropriate, but if uh, you prefer, then we'll wait. I would like to hear some of the, the new numbers brought uh, to us today. We have new information from Phoenix Center for the Arts, which I think is going to be very positive uh, for all of us. We do need to determine the amount that we want to recommend for the Children's Museum as well. And again, we'll have an opportunity to crunch the numbers together. And uh, again, I think um, we can realistically get closer to that, that 12.5 percent. Donna. Well, one of the things I would, I mean, I like the idea that you've figured it out percentage-wise and what that money is, but I would also like to suggest that um, we suggest to staff that certain monies, for instance, in the ADA are specifically earmarked for the one ADA project we hear. Not all of the money, I mean, some of it can come from arts and culture, but a, a percentage of it should be earmarked for that particular project. I mean, so so let's, I, and I don't know if that would be true with anything else. And let's bring, remember to bring that comment forward when we start looking at the numbers and um, how, again, we want to prioritize and the strategy for what we recommend. I think that's a great comment. Okay. We'll turn to Inger Erickson for our presentation. Uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the subcommittee, uh, just again, just a brief overview of the agenda for the day. Um, if we can get the slides up here. Um, we'll review the charge of the subcommittee. We'll I, re review the identified projects, the project ranking and results. We'll go to public comment at that point, and then the committee will have discussion and questions, and then the next steps will come. Uh, just as a reminder, the charge of the... Oh, we need to get the... We just advance maybe a couple more. One more. All right. So again, remember the charge of the subcommittee was to determine the highest priority projects and programs, recommend funding values for those items, 
and refer needs that cannot reasonably be deferred to the executive committee. And again, there will be a, a memo that goes to the executive committee that outlines not only the, the rankings, but some of these suggestions that you might be making to the uh, executive committee for consideration. Um, next slide. All right. Is it working? Yeah. All right. So again, um, as you all remember, um, there were more needs, as Devney mentioned, um, uh, than the capacity of the program. And you see that outlined on the screen here. Um, what was submitted for consideration was uh, 647 million. The capacity is 500 million. And so that gap that uh, was discussed is about 22 percent. Um, and if you look at the next slide that we have here, or uh, 147 million. So the next slide, apparently you cannot work this. <laughs> it's actually wrong we have advanced. So okay. the clicker is still not. All right. Okay, we'll work on the clicker. But if you can look at this, if you can look at this, this is all eight of the um, uh, subcommittees. And in the, uh, in the purple, that is um, the amount that uh, would get you to, if you, if you, this is just an illustration, but if you, if you looked at all things equally across the board and, and deducted that 22.7%, um, you see that each group has some uh, amount that would then go unfunded. And so this is, again, just an illustration. You see kind of across the board um, the arts and culture uh, uh, one. It's 43.4, and then that additional was at 56.1 that Devney had mentioned. Um, so at this time, uh, we want to review the projects, and I'll turn it over to uh, Mitch uh, to talk about the uh, projects that have been presented, and he has some additional information. And we're still having trouble with the clicker. So we'll just, Romeo, if you can just advance it for us, that'd be great. Good morning, members of the subcommittee. Um, here is an overview of all the projects that have been presented to you along with their GO bond requests. I will have some information on a new proposed project that is not on this list. As uh, Chair mentioned, that there's an update on the Phoenix Center for the Arts. And then later on today, you will have to make the bond recommendation for the Children's Museum of Phoenix uh, because the variable um, between their $1.5 million original ask up to the 5.3 that was presented by the museum. So with those variables, um, the total projects are between $81.8 million and $85.6 million. So a new project was presented. Um, to the Office of Arts and Culture last week. Um, this was sent to subcommittee members earlier this week. The Garment League is a nonprofit organization that focuses on fashion as an art form and supports all mediums of arts and culture related industries. The Garment League's focus and mission consists of providing continued education and resources for the Arizona based fashion community. With their platform, they are able to assist and provide education with fashion residencies, creative workshops, business planning, consulting, imaging and branding, technical specifications, manufacturing, as well as wholesale and retail trade. They currently rent space at Park Central in Midtown Phoenix, but the scope of the project is to purchase real estate for a permanent home for the organization and to build it out to provide global educational resources to be incubators of local artists and creatives. The benefit to the community is to provide access to continued education, utilizing streamlined industry practices and creative spaces for garment activations, and effectively serve the community that will benefit from being introduced to new trade skills, job opportunities, and a new network. The GoBond request is $10 million. Their proposal, again, was sent to the subcommittee this week, and I believe there may be representatives here to answer any questions. It's actually what Tanique and I were just messaging to each other about. I don't know that we have a representative here from the Garment League. Do we have any questions? My question is, there was a timeline to get this in, right? They um, did have every meeting to for the community to come forward with new projects. Um, they did connect with us, <clears throat> excuse me, at the last meeting. Um, we did let them know about the timeline. They still did submit the, the proposal. Okay. We have been in touch with a representative to talk about 
how this bond is about the critical needs of current um, and future assets and uh, that in five years there could be a bond program and also the timeline of the bond program as the um, piece of property that they would like to purchase is currently up for sale and may not be there in 2024 um, when this money is allocated. Thank you. Any other questions? As we come to our final meeting, a scope for the Children's Museum of Phoenix will need to be discussed during your deliberations. Again, the project is to add additional square feet in usable space by completing previously unfinished spaces in the museum. The project will increase exhibit and programming space to expand the operating capacity to serve more children and families. Again, there are multiple scopes. The original project was to renovate four rooms on the second and third floors to add programming space for the community. That was proposed by the city at $1.5 million. The museum did a full assessment of the building with Ryan Corporation and have a slightly higher quote for those four rooms at $1.8 million. The Ryan assessment also suggests that the dirt room in the basement that we have discussed would need to be tackled to ensure the new space on the second floor would be sound. The addition of the dirt room is a little over $1 million, bringing the four rooms plus the dirt room to $2.9 million. And then finally, the last option is to renovate all the unused space in the museum for $5.3 million. When you get to the rankings and votes, the subcommittee will again will need to choose one of these scopes. The Phoenix Center for the Arts has submitted a new proposal to the subcommittee. At your request, the tenant, the Parks and Recreation Department, and the Office of Arts and Culture convened to discuss immediate needs, fixes outside of the bond program, and what could be included in an updated scope. The Parks and Recreation will contribute non-bond funds for the roof, flooring, walls, electrical, and other repairs to the Phoenix Center for the Arts. The organization would like to submit a reduced proposal and is requesting $1.2 million in go bond funds to renovate its theater space. This is a component of the full proposal the organization presented at our last couple of meetings. The scope would be to be replace or upgrade the theatrical lighting, audio systems, seating, rigging, and replace the outdoor marquee for the Third Street Theater. The benefit would be to bring this facility up to current industry standards to better serve the need of the community, including artists, students, and patron. Again, the go bond request is $1.2 million, and uh, the Phoenix Center for the Arts is here if the subcommittee has any questions. Stop there and ask if there are any questions uh, about the Children's Museum slide or the Phoenix Center for the Arts slide. No? Madam Chairman? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to understand that uh, that reduction. So the the city general fund budget, i.e., the parks department, has agreed to the other amount, and thus it's reduced to 1.2 million. Is that what you explained? I am going to allow my colleague Cynthia Aguilar, Parks and Recreation Director, to answer. Excellent. Sandra Bassett is here as well. If we have any questions for Sandra. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, please uh, pardon my voice. I've lost my voice. Uh, but I do want to note that what Mitch uh, said is correct. Uh, the items, uh, subcommittee member, is uh, that we will be covering are those that we are contractually obligated to cover. Um, and so it's not everything that was in the original proposal to answer your question, but it is some of that. We did meet with them, our team met with them on Monday of this week, and we went through the items that were contractually obligated uh, to repair. Those are the items uh, that we'll be proceeding with. Uh, there are, I, my understanding, and I don't want to speak for Ms. Bassett, is that this is uh, this $1.2 million is how they've revised a request to focus on things that we won't be covering that they would like to the bond subcommittee to consider. And Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, if I might add to that also, um, the, the things that the Parks and Recreation Department are going to fund immediately are things that can't wait till 2024, so we need to take care of them now, and we do have money in, in um, our various funds to t take care of that. How much money is that? 
Uh, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, these items that are the immediate critical needs, we expect to cost about $250,000. That's a far cry from their original request. I don't understand. It seemed like there were far more critical needs than $250,000 worth. I, I will certainly allow, you know, Ms. Bassett, if, if there are questions for Ms. Bassett to answer from our perspective, and again, we did meet with them, we have mutually agreed that the, these are the critical items that need to occur now, and that is the cost estimate. Is there a plan for all the other needs? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, of members budget? of the subcommittee, those are items that we've determined are, we are not contractually obligated to do, the City of Phoenix, so those are not things that uh, that are in our plan for the future. Anything in the future that comes up that are things that are our responsibility per our agreement, HVAC, infrastructure of the building, some of those same things we're going into repair now, those are the things we will always take care of in the future. And Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, if I might add one more piece. You know, we, we are partners with um, the Arizona, the Phoenix Center for the Arts, um, you know, longstanding partnership, been there for a really long time, we'll continue to work with them and they've been having more readily meetings um, in the last several months. Um, and again, we will continue that because if there are things we need to address, obviously we will, but I think that we need to develop a plan between uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, our partners at uh, Phoenix Center for the Arts, and, and where we can include um, also um, any kind of grants and opportunities from the uh, arts and culture uh, area. Well, the $1.2 million that now is being asked for this subcommittee to consider um, it is very similar to what the Herberger is asking for in an upgrade to its um, uh, sound systems, et cetera, as well as the symphony. I don't quite understand why that would not be a critical need and why the Parks Department would not consider this as part of its bond program since it is the entity to which this organization is connected. I don't understand it. Yeah, uh, again, it might be appropriate um, if uh, Ms. Bassett wanted to speak to the uh, conversations that she had with the staff to, to get to this number, because um, this is a number she actually But what about the bond, and why isn't the Parks Department considering this program um, for the bond program in the parks? I just don't know, I still have not gotten an answer to that. I think, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, the Parks Department had identified 13 projects. I think we mentioned previously this was not one of them. The needs were so great. We have many other buildings that are in similar situations, so it was just a situation of trying to balance what we were taking forward to that subcommittee. The subcommittee, uh, the Parks and Recreation Bond Subcommittee, did hear this item, but they chose not to include it in their final list of projects. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to make a comment. I think there's an equity issue here happening, so just want to express that. Madam Chairman, I, I, I do want to hear from, from because I'm, I'm looking at uh, your very impressive end up, and I, I just don't understand how we got from there to the recommendation of 1.2. Um, could you explain that? public policy individual um, in terms of being able to fully dissect all of the elements. When we look at the contract initially, there are certain things that Parks and Rec has clearly identified that they are responsible for. When we look at what we've agreed to through our partnership to remediate, it would be those rooms directly that have been affected, not the entire buildings or anything else like that still remains to be updated as you have seen. It would effectively repair those rooms that have suffered the most damage at this point. So we're looking at the roof that has to be redone to continue to stop the continued deterioration of the rooms in those rooms that need new ceilings and new flooring because of everything that has occurred. We still need other fixtures to be done. We still need additional things to be done within the building, but again, we have identified some of those critical needs. It doesn't cover the electrical, um, it doesn't cover ceiling tiles and other things of that sort and other things that need to be done, but we are moving forward. So when we look at the contract in terms of what is supposed to be done, that is the electrical, the flooring, the HVAC and everything else. And I was told a number actually of about 1.2 million that was going to be done. Um, so that's a little different than the 200,000, 
I was told 1.2 to 1.4 million dollars um, of immediate remediation that would be occurring. So as we were asked to do, looking at the contract, what is Parks and Rec responsible for? What things are we looking for from arts and culture to help us to be able to sustain what we've been doing? So our language and our presentation is in alignment with other organizations that have presented to arts and culture so that we don't have people going up a 14 to 16 foot ladder to change a jail. We can no longer update our lighting as we've been you know, doing in the past because we simply can't get parts. Um, and the same thing with some of our sound systems as well. So what we are asking for is in alignment with everyone else that has given a presentation. It is further in alignment with the contracts that everyone respectively have with their different land um, landlords, be it Parks and Rec or be it Arts and Culture. So we ask for that same consideration and language be given. Um, and our continued partnership is the hope that the further remediations that are still very much dire to our organizational function will be considered um, for future capital improvement programs as well. Additionally, the same charge that we're also being given in looking for grants and other funding opportunities, we hope that that consideration and we know other organizations are working in that same vein. Um, so together, collectively in arts and culture, we are all kind of facing some of the same challenges and we all have some of the same agreements. And again, that brings us back to the same table for the same ask. So our future hope is for um, the building to continue to be improved and remain functional, um, as well as our ask here of arts and culture for what we're doing, which is in alignment with other organizations according to their contracts. But there's a lot of work still to be done, but we're pleased with where we're moving. In any past bond program, has the Phoenix Center for the Arts been a part of it? And if so, under which department or which division? Has it never been part of a bond program? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, it actually has, um, and I do believe it came under arts and culture. But we you can know, verify that. You know you. that for a fact? No, we can verify that for you. I need to double yeah, check Yeah, I'd like that. to have that verified. Yeah. Uh, in the past um, years, um, Parks and Recreation has a variety of historic preservation, things like that, and some of the money from, like, the historic preservation was in pre historic preservation, but it, was a, but it was a parks building, so we'll just have to verify that, and we can get that information right now. Did you recommend to, if that is the case, did you recommend to the arts and culture, given, given the knowledge of the needs of this facility, did you recommend that it be part of the arts and culture bond, or is that just something that came from the... Uh, Phoenix Center for the Arts. Uh, we, uh, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, that was not a recommendation that came from us. I believe uh, we've had multiple organizations go to multiple subcommittees. Um, so I believe that was just a choice, but not a direction. We went to the different ones because we weren't clear in which one would um, f actually take on the needs that needed to be done. So we were encouraged to bring our case to different um, different committees, which we did, and through conversation and support um, and reevaluation of our contracts and responsibilities, um, we have properly separated out what belongs where, um, and we are again pleased um, with the uh, compromise and the. Um, how we're moving forward to get everything done. So we're, we're greatly appreciative of Parks and Rec support, greatly appreciative of arts and culture, and again, I'll remind um, you all that we are in alignment with uh, other organizations and what they're presenting, what they're doing, um, and what they're asking. Uh, we are definitely in alignment with that, and like them too, we do have deferred and much needed repair that needs to be done so we can continue to serve the other 35,000 people that we do every day. And Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, while we're waiting to confirm where that money was, um, it, it may have been 3PI money, Parks Preserve Initiative money, um, but I, knew, I do know we put uh, money into um, elevators, lobbies, those kinds of things, so we're going to verify what funding source it was and where it was. But it might have been, there was a lot of money at that time, and, and some things were being paired together, um, and it might have been a 3PI, but we're going to verify that. I'd like to also know... Um how much money and what year that was? It, it sounds as if, though, there was an existing contract, and you had under that contract certain obligations. And what's happened here is you've agreed to meet your obligations. And that's good. The city should meet its obligations. <laughs> but we don't seem to be making a major investment in the uh, 
uh, uh, in the Center for the Arts and its expansion and its ability to grow. And frankly, from these discussions, from talking to other artists, et cetera, this is one of the most exciting places for, for young people and for new projects uh, in, uh, in this city. And the, 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 the disappointing thing, I'm glad you reached a compromise, by the way, and I hope they continue to raise hell and make your life a little miserable, within reason. Uh, but this compromise simply gets you to do what you were obligated to do. And, um, and, and frankly, I think that's sad. <laughs> we're not going any further. Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, thank you, Ms. Bassett, for your presentation. Um, I just want to reiterate or just say that uh, I am support of what you are sharing if it has been alignment and a collaboration between uh, both departments. I know that this was not easy and the numbers were higher than they were before, but I do want to make sure as we move forward that we are in honor of what critical needs are for our job for the bond committee and uh, want to thank you for coming to a place where we can move this forward. So I accept this. I do have two questions for clarification. Uh, Cynthia, you mentioned about $250,000 and we heard from Sandra more like 1.2, 1.4. Did you want to respond to that at all for clarification? Sure, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. I'd like to call either uh, one of my members from the team up just so they can clarify that. I'll look over to Deputy Director Todd Shackelford. And while Todd is joining us, the other question I had for you, the Parks Bond Subcommittee has completed its work and its recommendations and has neighborhood. Uh, that is uh, not quite correct. Neighborhood, neighborhoods have, um, but the Parks is on Monday. Todd has uh, been to the facility multiple times and met with uh, the Phoenix Center for the Arts and can speak more to what the ballpark range is that we think this work is going to total. Thank you. Uh, Madam Subcommittee, or Matt, sorry, I'm a little nervous. First time at the table. The, um, the cost for, excuse me, the, the cost for the entire scope of work at the PCA is approximately $250,000. <clears> there's a there's a range depending on the scope that, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. There's a range depending on the too, scope that PCA has had their vendors look at versus what we're looking at. So specifically with the flooring, we're looking at um, replacing the damaged flooring that exists now. Their scope covered the entire, the entire building. So there's a gap in scope, therefore creating a very distinctive gap in the cost for the flooring alone. <clears throat> Did you have a specific question about other yeah. scopes and... Yeah, because I, I think um, we heard a 1.2, 1.4 amount as, as the amount of as the, the total cost of what I think it was Sandra shared the 1.2, 1.4 million dollars to cover the costs of what the um, city is addressing now contractually. But then in Cynthia's presentation, we heard more like $250,000. So I think you just addressed part of that gap. Are there other, other gaps? Yeah, so if we, look at, if we look at the condition of the facility today and Park's responsibility to go in and repair that to bring it up um, to the condition it should be as a landlord to, for the tenant, that's that $250,000. There is additional work that the building does in fact need, but that would be more so um, as a nice to have. And that doesn't say that that work will be excluded. We're currently looking at adding to the flooring scope and there's some additional wall repairs. Thank you. One, one example I'll chime in and give, Madam Chair, and members of the subcommittee is the flooring. Originally, we were looking at just doing 
flooring where it's damaged in the rooms where it's damaged but I think we've where we've ended is that if we're going to go in there and do that we might as well go in there and do the flooring in all of the buildings so that is going to be above and beyond the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar number that was what we identified more as the critical needs things that were damaged things that really needed quick repair but we are planning to go in there and do as much as we can between now and the new year. I think over winter break, we're going to be working with the Phoenix Center for the Arts to make sure the timeline is something that impacts them as little as possible and do the flooring and do ceilings and do electrical, do the HVAC and do some other things in there. So I think that could go above the $250,000 number, but I don't know if we've got a final number on that, Todd. Yeah, the 250, that's, that's an estimate. We are committed to, to doing the entire the entire scope of work that's necessary as a landlord responsibility. That would include the damaged flooring. That scope, that scope may grow, so it has to be somewhat open-ended, as, as Cynthia was stating, um, in terms of you know, what's visible and what exists once we open up that floor. Also, we, we do, um, we're looking currently at replacing all of the HVAC systems that are in the theater space. We have the, they've been repaired and are currently running. But that is now on our life cycle replacement list, so that'll also add to, to the scope of work. But there, $250,000 would be a good starting point. To give you a final number right now, that would be, that would be difficult. But that gap between the 1.2 that uh, Sandra has, has cited and our number is, is basically just the difference from what needs to be replaced right now and then, and then looking forward. What would be the timeline for doing the work that needs to be done, the whole 1.2 million or whatever that figure is, that gap between 250 and 1.2 million? What's the timeline for that? Yeah, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, and Todd can correct me if I'm wrong, but our goal is to do as much of it as we can over the winter break, maybe when there are less classes or to a schedule that works for uh, the Phoenix Center for the Arts. So between now and the beginning of the new year, right. barring no issues with contractors, supply chain delays, and things like that. What about the HVAC in the basement? The HVAC in the basement, uh, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, so I think we mentioned last time that building was not built to have air conditioning originally to the basement in that space. That's going to take some engineering, some further assessments. That is not in here. Our goal would be to try to get that done before the next summer. There's a lot of assessment that has to go into that. Thank you for your time. I, I just like to clarify then. It sounds like there has been a spotlight now on Phoenix Center for the Arts, which is which is good. And Parks and, and Rec has committed to repairing the items which they're contractually responsible for. And it looks like it's, I'm, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm recapping this right. It could be 250,000, but you could, again, as with flooring, decide let's just do the whole thing but there is, a, we're getting a commitment that you're going to work um, from what we would call a landlord's basis to uh, fix what you're responsible for. Secondly, there are things that you are not responsible for, which would be like the seating and the outdoor marquee and things of that nature. And that's what we're being requested to approve, which would be approximately 1.2 million, which sounds like We've got a highlight on the Phoenix Center for the Arts for now in the future, which I'm sure their leader will make sure that um, we continue um, to be aware of what those needs are. But we've got a number that we could potentially put into a budget that's already been uh, restricted in a way, and this wasn't a consideration for the original budget, but we might be able to find a way to make this happen with 1.2 and then have considerations and an understanding for the future. Do I understand that correctly? I think your um, assessment is pretty much on track. Again, similar to other proposals that you all have received in which the contracts with the city and their landlords did not clearly delineate their issues and their opportunities for expansion or growth or coverage of ad, um, additional equipment or refurbishment. We are again in alignment with that, with that 1.2 that we're now um, have come to an agreement with for the bond proposal, correct. Regarding the timeline and everything else for the rest of our building, the 200,000 or so has been committed to being able to be done so that we can 
do what needs to be done on the inside and we can function. The concern it will be going forward, uh, of course, when additional money may become available according to budgetary needs uh, for the rest of the building to be brought up to standard. Um, and we're committed to working with uh, the city and the city is committed to working with us to develop a timeline. We do have the two weeks in which we are closed over the holiday season. We are prayerful um, and very hopeful <laughs> that a lot of this work can be done during that time frame. And uh, we're positive that the city here today has made that commitment to moving forward and helping to uh, get some things done. But the proposal is far beyond, as we know, $250,000. That remains the case. Um, but again, we appreciate the partnerships that we have with the city. We appreciate the conversations and we are moving forward in a positive direction um, towards getting the immediate remediation for the rooms that are uh, in most peril at this time. Well, your tenacity is appreciated and I think Parks and Rec, um, it sounds like um, that you're very aware and committed um, to helping with what you're responsible for as a landlord and I think that that will become a great partnership. So thank you all. Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, thank you again, um, Ms. Bassett, for explanation. While I shared that I accept the $1.2 million that you did uh, have an alignment with the staff, I want to remind the subcommittee when we did our rankings that we did vote based on the fact that it was a $2.3 million project and we have the ability um, in this process to approve more. So I would encourage us to figure um, how we want to do that when we get to that process. Uh, and I just want to say this as an arts administration, arts administrator, it, it's just challenging at moments and troubling to hear. Uh, when I, I hear staff say these are nice to have things, I get right. it, but it's, that's just hard to hear. So I, I, I accept it. that because it is a nice to have, not to have your foot go through a floor. It is a nice to have to not have water leaking from the ceiling into your offices so your staff can't work. If these are nice to haves, we want the nice to have so that we can continue to serve. And I don't greatly appreciate the term nice to have for us. If it's nice for us to have, then that term should be used unilaterally with some of the other things that have been discussed as well. So I would ask for, I would ask for equity in language. I would ask again for equity and consideration and I thank you guys again, each of you subcommittee members, chair, vice chair, I thank you all in the city again for the opportunity to partner to get these nice to haves that thank allow you. us just to function. And I, I think I want to articulate it a little bit differently. Oh, I heard $250,000 is the amount for what needs to be done now will be done immediately. What I think I also heard is it could be up to 1.2, 1.4 of the additional work that you are planning to do to, I guess, cover those nice to haves if that's the, the the term that we're, that we're using, which I would ask that we maybe remove that from our vernacular, but um, is that, that is the spirit that I'm hearing and that it's $250,000 at a minimum need to get done absolutely now, but we also want to do all the flooring, we want to do all the tile, and that right. could be up to 1.2, 1.4. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, we don't know the max number that that will max out at, so I'd hate to give a number, but it's at minimum $250,000. We are going to go in and do everything that we can since we're going to be in there over the break, do all of the flooring and all of those rooms, so that will definitely go up. We're and to doing the vice all chair's the flooring, point, but not all we, of the rooms. We're not doing all of the rooms. We're doing all of the flooring in, all, in, in three buildings, from what I'm told, and we're doing the rooms that have suffered the water damage but not okay, necessarily so all of the rooms in all the building. Did I get that wrong from the communication we had? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, I will commit at this moment that staff will continue to work with them and we will do the things that we need to do to address the situations and make it comprehensive and not piecemeal. Perfect. Thank you. And as a reminder, as the, the vice chair shared, uh, we were considering the 2.3 amount when we were doing our rank order through the survey. Um, so I'd love to move us forward to the survey results, unless, Mitch, you have any other um, slides before that? Or shall we? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, I, I did find from uh, staff research that in past bonds, um, there was $5.9 million. It was a parks project in the arts subcommittee. So that's 
that's how we've kind of gotten to this point. It's, it's, sometimes it gets uh, confusing on, you know, which committee is it in, but it was a parks project in the arts subcommittee, like we had had some parks projects in the uh, historic preservation. So that's how it was done in the past, and this, this is a little bit different. Do you but, know the year? I know that was um, requested. Between the years of 2001 and 2006, there was a total of 5.9. Okay. Okay. That was allocated for Phoenix Center for the Arts for the that is accessible elevator, I believe. Uh, all, there was ver a variety of things, and that those were the monies that were used. Okay, wonderful. Uh, for providing that information, thank you. Okay, I'd like to move us uh, to the survey results yeah. next in order to see our, our rank order uh, in aggregate, and then again, we will uh, also discuss where we land with the rank order as a subcommittee as well as the amounts we'd like to assign and again we can increase we can decrease and I believe we can also as we're thinking about the amounts identify an amount and not necessarily the projects that will be completed with that amount so if for the Children's Museum for example or Phoenix Center for the Arts we want to identify an amount we can leave it in a sense um, up to the organization to use those monies to complete the most critical needs that they they deem are most critical. Okay. And Madam Chair, as just a reminder to everybody, after the presentation um, from Adam, we will have some speakers. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, Adam Miller, Budget and Research Department. It's my pleasure to present the results of the ranking exercise that the subcommittee participated in uh, last week. Uh, the committee identified 10 projects that included five projects from the capital needs uh, 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 needs study, uh, two from the future needs portion of the capital needs study, and three new proposals, the Herberger Theater Pavilion, the Center for the Arts, and the um, Phoenix Theater Company project. Just to remind, uh, again, the subcommittee and the community, uh, what I'll be presenting here is just intended as a starting point for subcommittee discussion. The results of this survey are not in any way binding. Uh, in addition to providing your rank order preference, subcommittee members were asked three additional questions, uh, whether or not projects should be funded at a higher level, a lower level or if a project should not be part of this bond uh, program and so we'll look at, at that information as well. Um, so just I'd uh, like to explain that I refuse to participate in the ranking numbers and I'd like to explain why. I, I think you're all aware that I believe the, uh, the Latino project uh, is, is a number one and it certainly in my mind is. But, but so is um, the Jewish historical project. So is Rabbi Plotkin's project. For me to sit here and say that's number two, I, I, uh, I just couldn't do it. That's number one. The Latino is number one in my mind. The blatant discrimination that's going on at, uh, at uh, uh, the Phoenix Theater that's number one. That should be corrected immediately. As a matter of fact, I've met with city council people to say this shouldn't be here. It should be in the general fund. Blatant discrimination should not be allowed in this city. Uh, that's number one. And so trying now to say, okay, where does the Children's Museum fit in all of this? Is it a number two? Uh, I like kids. I've had five. Um, uh, I still like him. <laughs> now, <laughs> well, you don't want to know. <laughs> anyway, it, 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 it just didn't make sense to me to, for me to say the Rabbi Plotkin Center is number two, that somehow the Holocaust should be secondary or tertiary uh, or rank fifth for that matter. It made sense to me to say these things are important, very important. These things are important, perhaps not as much. And to say this project uh, really isn't ready. It, it, it should be in the drawing boards and come back again after they work it out. That made sense to me. But, but to say that 
uh, the Jewish Historical Center is number two or number three. Uh, the blatant discrimination should be number four. It was just not an acceptable process. Now, I've used SurveyMonkey before, uh, uh, and uh, I'm not a monkey. It, and, and we've used it in politics quite a bit, and I understand that you didn't choose to adjust it. You have that right to adjust it and modify it. I wish you had, because I, again, I reject the, the ranking one, two, three, four, five uh, as, uh, as an order of my preference. And I think that's probably what kept most of us up at night. And I'm hopeful that the executive committee level will all agree there have been learnings through this process. Um, there has been some confusion in the community about which subcommittee, we've talked about it here, to take a project. So I'm hopeful that at the executive committee level, some of these corrections will be made. And I want to make that commitment to this subcommittee to do my best bringing forward the projects, why we feel so passionately that they should all make the recommended list. Um, in terms of the survey, I think it's a, just a good starting point for us to at least over the course of the last week to gather our thoughts, organize our, our thoughts about these various projects. Uh, but we can certainly, by the end of our discussion today, uh, you know, come up with that strategy for myself and our, our staff leadership to take the, to the executive committee and, and really make the case for why all of these projects should be included, why they could have gone to other subcommittees. We're talking about accessibility. We're talking about remembrance, uh, representation. I, there are critical needs, critical aspects of our community that need to be supported through this process. Madam Chairman, thank you, and thank you for, uh, for, for your commitment. But uh, this, this numerical process, one, two, three, four, five, is gonna go from here to the executive committee to God knows where, to the city council, uh, et cetera. And it just doesn't make sense to me uh, for, again, if we go through this one, two, three, four, five process, and I don't know where the Rabbi Plotkin Center sits. I don't know where the um, correction to the, to the uh, uh, theater sits. But I do believe that when it's all done, if you follow the system, there's going to be a one and there's going to be a two because that's all the monkey allowed. That's all the monkey allowed. And so once I discovered that the monkey had no ability uh, to uh, accept more than one one, I refused to participate. But, but I, again, man, I ain't going to reject it completely because you nor I nor any member of this committee has any ability to know where this thing is going after we leave here. I mean, we don't know that it's going to go to the executive committee and they're going to say, no, nah, they said that uh, the Jewish Center was number four, we don't have enough money, they're gone. Uh, that, et cetera. And, and all of that would occur simply because a monkey did not allow us to use our judgment and the staff went by the monkey. And, and I just think, you know, sometimes the staff makes mistakes. One of the reasons I like to use surveys is just to, to get a sense of where we're all, what we're all thinking, where we're all kind of landing on, on items. And I, I think what we will see in a, a minute will give us a sense of, are we all aligned in, 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 in where you know, our priorities are with the projects? Maybe they all tied for one. They didn't, but you know, that could be our recommendation, that they all tie for one. Um, could I ask when, for staff to address when we do go to executive committee, what's the process at executive committee? If you have eight presenting on their prioritized items, where does the executive committee go from there? Thank you, Madam Chair. Subcommittee members, the process for the executive committee is expected to, uh, to start with the subcommittee chairs uh, with support from staff presenting what the subcommittee's recommendation is to the executive committee. And so there will be the opportunity during that presentation for the subcommittee to express uh, to the executive committee what the discussion entailed, uh, how the executive, uh, how the subcommittee came to their recommendation. Um, the survey monkey was 
designed in a manner that reflected the charge of the executive committee, which was to provide a rank ordered list of projects that in your opinion could not be deferred to a future bond program. Uh, the survey was voluntary. The method that the subcommittee chooses to use to, to develop your recommendation is completely at the discretion of the subcommittee. Just to follow process, another question or comment? You sure? Okay. Because um, I know we do have to get through the public comment period before we deliberate. So we should allow staff to present the slides, ask any questions about the remaining slides, take public comment, and then we can pick this conversation back up. We won't be voting on anything. May I ask one question? Yeah, of course. Is it a public document? Once you present it, is it a public document and therefore going to be archived and available to anyone who is going to say that this committee made a decision that uh, the Jewish Center was number four or whatever it is? Is it a public document? Subcommittee member, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, absolutely all of the information that has been transmitted between staff and the subcommittee or presented during a public hearing or public meeting is public information. Therefore, that's why I don't want to submit it because this will be memorialized in fashions and used in fashions that we cannot predict. I, I do believe we voted at our last meeting to utilize the, the survey tool. Um, so I, I would like to move forward with seeing the results, but of course noting as this is as public record, knowing that um, you did not submit votes, and we can determine again as a subcommittee where we go from here um, once we view the survey results, hear the public comment, and then we can deliberate from there. Is everyone comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. And I absolutely respect why you did not vote through the survey. Understood. Yep. Okay. Uh, Adam. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, just to go over some of the rules of how we handled the submittals from the subcommittee members. So the rank order that you're going to see is based on the median value. Uh, we only use the average value in the event that two projects receive the median rank. The average value is then used as the tiebreaker. So what does this mean as you're looking at the results? If the median is a low number, then the majority of members ranked that project high. So if we have a median of two, that means the majority of members on the subcommittee ranked that project second or higher. If the median is a high number, the majority of members rank that project low. A median of 11 would indicate that, uh, well, we wouldn't have that because we have 10 projects. But if we had a, uh, a median of uh, high me a high median, then we know that that project was ranked low. Uh, if the median is the same number as I mentioned, those projects would then be ordered uh, by the average rank, low to high. Uh, I'll bring up the, uh, the first ranked project uh, review the structure of this table to orient uh, members and the public. Then we'll populate this table with the rank ordered list. Uh, I have a additional slide um, that contains the funding information uh, with the projects in the same rank ordered list. I'll, when I move to that slide, uh, just be aware that those projects are still listed in the same order. So coming in first was the Latino Cultural Center. The median rank going left to right, the median rank was a two. Uh, the highest rank was first, the lowest rank was 10th, and the average was 3.88. Again, populating the table, Valley Youth Theater, Permanent Home, Children's Museum Expansion. Uh, I do want to remember, and I'll, I'll mention this again on the next slide, the scope was not uh, defined for the Children's Museum. Phoenix Center for the Arts Project, Phoenix Theater Company ADA project, Arizona Jewish Historical Society expansion, Symphony Hall theatrical venue improvements, Office of Arts and Culture facilities critical maintenance, Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements, and finally Herberger Theater Center pavilion stage. Now I'm going to move to the funding information that you can see, again, just a little bit of orientation to the slide. Again, the projects are listed in the same rank order. You can see the amount of bond funds that were identified for those projects. Either those were the amounts identified in the capital needs study or identified as part of the submittal from the outside organization. Or I do want to highlight in the case of the Children's Museum and in the case of the Center for the Arts, uh, the Children's Museum scope had not been defined. 
at the conclusion of the last subcommittee member, uh, the subcommittee instructed staff and Center for the Arts officials. I use are of course left um, blank. Alley of members that voted to provide more funding for a particular project, less funding, or uh, the DNF is do not fund. And then finally in the far right column you can see the cumulative total uh, of the projects through their ranking, again recognizing that uh, we have zero plugged in for Children's Museum and for Center for the Arts. Um, we do have a tool that we can use to assist the subcommittee as you begin your deliberation. If you start to uh, change funding levels uh, or reorder this rank ordered list, we can do that real time so you can see how your changes um, affect the outcome and the recommendation. Uh, we do ask that the subcommittee um, take motions, take action uh, in the event that you're looking to change that list. Once we start to move things, it becomes more difficult to unravel them. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Um, and with that, I can take any questions on the process. I understand that we want to go to public comment before the deliberation begins. I really don't understand. I mean, why don't you rank them if they're to be ranked? It's just, it seems like the, if I'm understanding correctly, the Herberger Theater Center Pavilion Stage Project is the number one project. Is that correct? Then I don't understand it. I must not be able to understand it, but can you do a ranking based on what it was rather than, say, keeping the same ranking at this, from the beginning so that it's absolutely clear? And also in your and the one that you submitted to us um, here on our, what you handed out today, does not list the Phoenix Center for the Arts as zero. It listed as an eight. So I don't, I'm confused. Subcommittee Member Freeman, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, to answer your last question first, the Center for the Arts original proposal was, was eight. Uh, we thought that to be consistent with how the museum was being handled and recognizing that the final scope for those projects had not been determined, that that $8 million value we knew going into the survey was not uh, reflective of what the project was going to be. Vice Chair Broughton had mentioned um, that, that the understanding at the time had been $2.3 million. Uh, staff's understanding at the time was that the Parks Department staff and the Phoenix Center for the Arts would, would be meeting uh, subsequent to that, to that discussion to work out the final scope. Our intent with the, with the survey, the ranking order of the survey, was to not identify the amounts at this time. And so they've pulled in, well, they, they've pulled in the amounts of the critical needs study, or the amounts provided in the critical needs study recommendations, as well as the amounts brought forward with new projects, um, with the exception of the Children's Museum and Phoenix Center for the Arts, because we knew that the, the number was still fluid. Um, in terms of, our, based on our conversation at our last meeting, and we all agree that we would just keep those numbers out at this point and wait until this meeting to... So I would say, Madam Chair, to the subcommittee, numbers were kept out, but remember we are looking at it based off of what was presented to us in each of the proposed projects. And Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, again, we're to, we're to determine the values and the ranking order um, per, the sub, for, per the executive committee's uh, direction through the city manager. So the slide that we have on screen right now is basically the, helping us with our next step. What we're seeing on screen, if we were to remove the amounts under the bond funds, is what we accomplished through the survey tool. What we accomplished through the survey tool was the ranking order without scoring based on the amounts. We're just, you have just compiled for us in one location what we determined to be the rankings through the survey tool, the amounts associated, the two amounts that we still as a subcommittee need to agree upon, as well as still make adjustments to others. Uh, but this is more at this point a tool for us to begin our deliberations. M Madam Chair? Yeah, please. Help me see if I'm understanding this right. This is discussion, right? This is a ranking. It's not permanent. It's what we said according to our surveys that we rated as far as 
the Latino Cultural Center would be number one. That we have a limited dollar amount. These amounts could change. So if we look at Phoenix Center for the Arts and we say, well, it doesn't have anything, but it looks like 1.2 million would make sense. We plug those numbers in. This isn't a permanent set, unless I'm understanding it wrong. This is ranking what we as, me as chair members said was the our priority of a project and not necessarily a number. At this particular point, after public comment, we can determine what numbers could be in there, could be changed, or an order. So this is, as I understand, this isn't anything for us to really get worked up about. It's our discussion point. This isn't it. This is where we start with our rankings. And now public comment and discussion comes in. Do I understand that right, or am I off? Subcommittee Member Musa, you understand that correctly. Then we shall discuss. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Subcommittee uh, Annette. I was going to just uh, remind everybody at the beginning that um, <clears throat> the, Madam Chair announced an approach, and that approach was to move from, we originally started with the 56 million, and that we may want to propose the um, 62.5 million. So we have an opportunity to sort of play with the recommendations as we decide. So if you are thinking about that after public comment, remember we are kind of pushing the envelope, and I want to say this for public record, that we understand from several of the other subcommittees that a lot of projects were said to be presented back to, to arts and culture. And so a lot of projects came to us that originally were not um, in our scope. And I think considering what um, Madam Chair is presenting, we should take that into account. Understanding, though, if we do have a particular budget that's $56 million, we should keep an eye on that dollar amount in our ranking process that those should be um, our, our num or whatever number we choose, those top priorities should be in that $56 million. We can still choose to go to $70-some million, but the chance that anything above that $56 million is going to be approved is not great so it's a recommendation but whatever we put within this 56 million should be really what our priorities are since that's a budget we've been given madam chair members of the subcommittee I, I would say that you would be mindful of that but again um, the subcommittee was not um, committed to a certain process nor a certain dollar amount just to give some rankings and give what you thought as a subcommittee would be appropriate for those projects but again, I think it's wise to be mindful of what you just said. Could we go back to the previous slide? I just want to make sure everyone's really clear on the rank order. So the pavilion stage, we had a ranking of 10, whereas Latino Cultural Center had a ranking of one, which is the highest ranked. So the highest ranking being one on, on down to 10. To make sure we all are on the same page there. Yeah. So if it the number one ranking is the Latino Cultural Center. Yes, yeah. we all place that as the highest prioritized project. Yeah. Or not all, but the majority. majority. The, me the median. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. At this point, unless there are other questions or comments, would like to move on to the public comment section before we come back to deliberate. Um, and again, we'll have a chance to, to work with those numbers to get us to the amount that we're all... Um, that we all agree upon. So it looks like we have a total of seven speakers. Uh, zero of those are virtual, which means we have seven in-person speakers, and I would like to give each two minutes uh, for their public comment. And Madam Chair, would you like the lawyer to give us our um, statement about civility? I would. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. Members of the public may speak to comment on the general obligation bond program. The city code requires speakers to present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language, threats, or personal attacks on members of the public, subcommittee members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules will lose the opportunity to continue to speak. 
the subcommittee and staff cannot discuss or comment on matters related to pending claims or litigation. Thank you. Thank you. And will staff please call our first speaker? Our first speaker in Upper Council Chambers is Matthew Schaefer, followed by Mark Metis. Good morning, committee. Uh, thank you so much for your con continued consideration of the Phoenix Theater Project. Um, I just wanted to clarify something that I had heard earlier about the um, the 10 million for the ADA that was um, recommended for approval to the executive committee by the uh, Neighborhood Services Department. Um, we were told that that, during those subcommittee meetings, it came out that that was intended to be $2 million a year, so it wouldn't be available to our project because that project needs to be funded completely up front. In addition, that's for all of the all of the buildings in the, in the city, and um, so dedicating that much money to uh, that big a percentage to that one project would be infeasible and the, the public works director at one of those other subcommittees did mention that it wasn't intended to be earmarked for any specific projects and that the, the city was undergoing a, a process to determine where that money would be spent. So I just wanted to clarify that that money wouldn't be earmarked for our project and um, it seems to be impossible to do so. Again, thank you for your consideration. Our next speaker is Mark Mattis, followed by Sandra Bassett. Good morning. Thank you very much for your time again this morning. And I, I want to say a couple of things about our project. Um, we do believe that this project will benefit the community, will benefit uh, a diverse range of performing companies and artists that right now do not have a place of prominence in downtown Phoenix to be able to perform. And that's what this project will give them. Um, it will also benefit the, the greater downtown community, those who visit, those who live in downtown, providing that ongoing free opportunity to enjoy the performing arts. With regard to the project uh, that was brought forward by the Convention Center for our lighting and sound system, we have the same issues that, are, that you're seeing and hearing from other places. We do not have any moving lights. We, all of our lights have to have gels in front of them, are outdated. All of our sound systems we're, we're having issues with right now that are, um, I don't want to say stopping shows, they are affecting the performances that happen in the theater. So there is a, we haven't talked a lot about that, but we're in the same situation at the Herberger Theater Center that these other um, very worthy organizations are in. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear for you as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sandra Bassett, followed by Kate Wells. I know you guys are tired of hearing from me, but let me remind you of a couple of great things about the Phoenix Center for the Arts and why we desperately need the help for the deferred maintenance and especially within our theater. It isn't just about the building. It's about the community. It's about the nonprofits that reside inside of our buildings, which total over eight at this point in time, and they call our building home. The Phoenix Children's Chorus has been with us for over 30 years. We are their home, along with other resident organizations like the Rising Youth Theater. It is about the over 50 arts and culture organizations within the community that look to us to be able to have those barriers to entry eliminated by being able to participate in our space, and they deserve a better experience where they're not tripping over carpet or they have lights that do work or they can be heard when they're performing. They deserve that type of opportunity. It is about what we bring to the community. We are the lowest cost theater in the Metro Phoenix area. 
We are the lowest cost, and we put money back into those artists that are teaching. We put money back into these groups that are here because we don't keep raising um, rates to keep them out of being able to participate, but we purposely look and seek for funding to keep the rates low so they can engage. And we need to be able to provide those opportunities, not just the Phoenix Center for the Arts as a building, but for this community that is here and looking for those opportunities to engage and we engage inside of our building and outside of our building my concern today remains the same that we have come to some definite and definitive agreements other things are still up in the air and time is of the essence we need the help we are in alignment with everything else that is being asked for from other organizations according to their contracts as well but we have to remember we need to continue to allow opportunities for arts and culture engagement and that is what the phoenix center for the arts does every day and that's why we need your help thank you Our next speaker is Kate Wells, followed by Joe Chandler. Good morning, and um, thank you again, um, committee, subcommittee, for um, your really thoughtful um, work on this, um, and for your volunteer time um, to make our, our community stronger and more vibrant. Um, I also want to thank you for your patience. I understand the museum's Proposals have been confusing, and um, hopefully over the last three meetings, we've been able to clarify for you why our project um, is really a $5.39 million project. Um, and as Director Menchaca has shared, if the city had all of the updated budgetary numbers at the time the recommendations were originally made, um, it would have been for this amount. Um, our museum uh, proposal meets or exceeds every single one of the committee's criteria that were originally laid out in the first meeting. Local and national donors are willing to swoop in and help us build our new exhibits and programs as soon as we have the spaces renovated. The museum has a plan in place. We have the experience in successfully completing a project of this scale, and most importantly, we are poised to serve hundreds of thousands more children and families with this project. And this will impact the critical work um, that we're all doing to make sure that we're supporting our youngest residents. We expect that this project will allow us to serve a half a million children and families a year, which is, an in with this bond money, we would be able to increase our current capacity by 150,000 children and families per year. Um, I also want to mention um, how important another line item on this is. They're all important. They're all super, super important. But the city's, uh, the money the city has set aside for major improvement projects for, at $10 million, although it came up low in the rankings, is critical to all of the city-owned arts organizations. These are the projects that are over $500,000 and our roofs, our HVAC, and this is planned maintenance that really needs to happen at all of our different programs. Thanks again for your consideration of our entire amount and um, have a great day. Our next speaker is Joe Chandler followed by Lloyd Hopkins. Good morning, Madam Chairman, Madam Vice Chairman, and members of the community. Thank you so much for serving our community on this council and making the recommendations that you have. I'm Joe Chandler, and for the last 10 years, I've served on the Board of Directors of Value Theater, and I continue to serve on the Board of Directors of Value Theater. I appreciate the work that the, community, uh, the committee has done in the rankings. This was not an easy decision. Um, I just want to continue to emphasize that unlike some of the organizations that are here that all have very worthy missions, we are the ones that are losing our home. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And so for the past eight years that I've been on the board, I have focused on helping Value Theater realize this dream of finding a new home. We thought many years ago our home was going to be on the corner of First and Fillmore where we produced many shows we're going to lose that facility. And I want those shows to continue, not just for this, the, the performers on stage, but the work we do with those performers, how we reach peer-to-peer -peer mentorship and inspiration through our literacy and the arts program where we reach into Title I schools, through our Sponsor C program where we bring unhoused children to the theater for their first theater experience often 
inspiring them to pursue a better life. To our first responders nights where we help our first responder families, you know, have a family night at the theater and other programs that we do. I look at BYT as more than just a children's youth theater organization. I think it's a valuable social service agency here in our community. And I thank you so much for your support. Our next speaker is Lloyd Hopkins, followed by Michael Bernard. <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, Vice Chair, committee members, thank you for allowing me some time to speak today. Uh, my name is Lloyd Hopkins. I'm the CEO of Million Dollar Teacher Project, and I'm a proud member of the Board of Directors of the Children's Museum of Phoenix. Excuse me. Uh, as a board member, I see day in and day out the impact that the museum has on all of the young children in our community. As a CEO of an organization that works directly with teachers, I know what a tremendous resource the museum is to educators throughout our state. We literally have schools from as far as Chinle, Snowflake, Maricopa, and Lake Havasu trek all the way to Phoenix to attend the Children's Museum's because those educators know how impactful the Children's Museum is for the social and emotional growth of young children. Our, vi our visitors come from all over the country because of the world-class reputation the museum has and the diversity of the children and families that make up 350,000 plus visitors a year, like the United Nations, everyone sees themselves represented at the museum and everyone is welcome. On behalf of the board, I thank you for your consideration of full funding to finally complete the treasured community asset. Thank you. Our final speaker is Michael Bernard. Madam Chair and subcommittee, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't hear my name and I, so I rushed over here as quickly as these old bones will uh, let me do. Um, I just want to uh, <clears throat> point out and thank you all. This is not an easy oof, um, thing. I've listened to uh, everybody uh, speak on behalf of their uh, facilities and needs and I don't know how you would make a decision, I don't know how you make a decision um, one over the other. Everybody is important and everybody's in need. And the other thing is, is everybody um, is um, desperate to serve this community. Our need um, is uh, our ADA uh, need for participation for individuals with mobility issues, age, and other physical disabilities is a critical as well. It allows, it helps us in our inclusiveness to allow um, people who, who are within that population of need um, to be able to participate. And the audience gets to see them participate. Parents get to see their children participate. Um, it is, um, it is a, an ability on the part of um, the city to be able to say we're responding to um, individuals that sometimes um, are not at the top of the list, and um, and I um, so I ask that you consider our funding. I want to thank uh, Mitch and Romeo for doing everything that you can to um, help our facilities. It, it is not an easy thing, and I certainly support the idea of trying to fund. Um, the overall needs of uh, physical facilities uh, within our community. So I appreciate um, this time and I, pre I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Madam Chair, that was our final speaker. Well, thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers today. At this point, we are able to begin deliberating and would like to turn to the Vice Chair first, as I think she has something to say. Yes, um, Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, just entertain me on this. So, <clears throat> uh, 
I want to go back to um, the chair's approach that she presented earlier. So if we are all in support of that, and I want to note that um, Deputy City Manager uh, Erickson did mention that yes, the 56.1 is a recommendation uh, from the staff. However, we as a subcommittee can rep recommend what we feel is best considering what the chair presented around the percentages earlier. Um, that would allow, based on our ranking, if we were to look at, at whatever different amount for all of the projects, that $62.5 million would get us coverage to about um, the top eight, which would leave out the Herberger Theater Center, which is problematic for me. So with that, I want to challenge uh, a question to the staff. And with that, I would like to ask, considering what um, has been done at other subcommittees, to ask if John Chang uh, would be willing to come up and talk to us about the Herberger Theater's theatrical venue improvements um, as a way where we can look at um, working together around bond money as well as convention money. And Madam Chair, uh, members of the subcommittee, while John's coming forward, um, again, this is a partnership much like um, we talked about with Parks and Recreation. And so um, uh, John is here to uh, kind of address um, the, that from the perspective very similar to um, Parks and Recreation situation. In a symphony hall, a similar partnership? I'll let John speak with that. Good, mo good morning, Madam Chair and mem members of the subcommittee. Um, let me address, uh, as you requested, uh, two of the projects that were uh, brought forward uh, by staff. Uh, the first one being the Symphony Hall improvements. Uh, this, again, just to recap, would be for uh, audio uh, acoustical enhancements to the uh, audience chamber, audio visual improvements, and assistive listening devices. These items were first uh, identified as uh, facility needs back in 2015. Uh, however, at the time, we didn't have the capacity uh, to address these, and so we've been planning uh, to incorporate these into a future bond program. The Herberger Theater uh, improvements uh, would include uh, new lighting and audio equipment, as well as assistive lis listening devices. And as Mr. Metis uh, mentioned earlier in his remarks, these systems are reaching the end of life. And so as you know, and, and, and also the Herberger Theater improvements as the landlord of the building, the city is ultimately responsible for, uh, for, for these items. Um, so we believe that it's important that both of these items be addressed in this particular bond program and not wait uh, for a future because they, they are critical needs. So in, to that end, uh, our team has been looking at various options and evaluating uh, ways that perhaps we could help to uh, advance these uh, items uh, under the current uh, uh, bond program. And so um, we've determined that we could financially uh, support on the Symphony Hall project $3 million of that project and $2 million of the Herberger Theater uh, theatrical improvement projects. We would accomplish this by reprioritizing um, our current five-year capital improvement program in order to fit these uh, in. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, that would be $5 million. That on the $8.7 million for the Phoenix Symphony, for Symphony Hall would bring that to $5.7 million. And for the Herberger Center theatrical improvements, um, from my standpoint, it would be pulled in as our priority recommendations uh, with $2 million uh, from the Convention Center leaving us $3.3 million to consider funding, which I feel like uh, is a thank you. Not sure if you can give more, um, John, but just had to say that. Thank you. <laughs> and Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, I, I think this process has been good in a lot of ways. Um, it, it's, it's, 
really forced the staff to go back and look at um, some things from a different lens. And, and so, you know, uh, staff is always uh, working with partners, but I think it's really important to shore up those partnerships even more strongly. And I think this process has, has helped put a lens on that. Are we able to revise the slide that we're seeing to reflect those uh, reduced? If that's the pleasure of uh, the chair, then yes, we can. Yes, please. Assuming <laughs> Symphony and, and Mark Metis are okay with but, those immediate funds. Excellent. And, and Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, if there could be a motion, that would be helpful again, because we want to make sure we don't go one way and unravel it and come back. So if there's a motion and uh, moving forward on that. I, I, thank you again. I would like to make a motion that we accept um, the $3 million uh, against the $8.7 million for the Phoenix um, Symphony Hall improvements, no, S Symphony Hall theatrical venue improvements, and the $2 million from the Convention Center for the $5.3 million for the Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. I believe from here we should uh, identify subcommittee's recommended amounts for discussion. Madam Chair, I yes. have a question. Um, maybe it was answered before, um, but I, and I apologize for that, but I remember at a certain point um, for the ADA project, was that not, could that not come from a separate budget? We don't know. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, if I could address that. Um, I, I do believe that um, when uh, Director Judice came from Public Works, that pocket of money or that bucket of money that they have in, in the um, neighborhoods and um, uh, city facilities, that is going to be over a period of five years. And so this particular project, it, it can't, it, it wouldn't be identified in that, in that bond package, so I, I think um, for the purposes of what I think you're trying to accomplish, it probably would be most appropriate um, to address it here because they, they wouldn't be able to identify it as a specific project in that pot of money. Thank you. I, I'd like to make a recommendation about the Children's Museum. Um, as Kate Wells told us, um, I, I want the, the full amount of 5.3 million to be considered not the 1.2 or whatever it was, 1.8. Um, I think it's the Children's Museum has proven that it has an incredible, um, serves an incredible number of people, more than any of these organizations are serving in terms of the community, in terms of visitors. Um, I just think they've done an incredible job of, of um, having been an organization that actually started, I believe it was in 1998, were part of the next bond program, have, have fulfilled all their obligations, have raised an incredible amount of money, have people waiting in the wings to, um, uh, you know, to give money to the organization. Uh, I think they've proven themselves as a fully functioning and um, a wonderful addition to our community. Um, I also, you know, I know that uh, Kate mentioned that Mitch had said had he known the full amount at the time that these, you know, th that this, uh, these recommendations were made, that indeed it would have been the full amount. Also, we've, we're considering all kinds of projects that were not in the initial recommendations at all. Um, so, if we're going to consider those, we need to consider what would impact the Children's Museum and let it function most fully. So my recommendation, and I don't know if it's in the form of a, uh, to move that, is that if we're going to consider the Children's Museum to receive funds, we, we you know, it's 5.3 rather than the lower amount. Yep. Thank we, you. We do need to have discussion about that amount as well as Phoenix Center for the Arts. Um, so let's continue the discussion around the Children's Museum first. Uh, Madam Chair, actually, if I, if I may, we've seen some scope creep for a number of these projects. What I think might make most sense is we have a couple of, really high dollar projects in here that if we elect to go with the amount proposed by staff, you know, Latino Cultural Center, for example, the staff recommended number is about a third of the number you've proposed, Madam Chair. So at least in my mind, it would make sense for us to check off the really big numbers first to give us a sense of, you know, 
where we actually have left to wiggle in terms of these smaller projects. Not that any of them are less important than one another, but recognizing the, the significant differences in dollar amounts here. Can, can, uh, Mitch, can you give us your insight, if you, if you will, on that of the um, Children's Museum as far as if we were funding the initial part for the rooms versus the entire amount? Because it would seem like the initial part of, I think, the four rooms um, was within lines of where that budget uh, we had in the initial um, budget. Um, would that be of any benefit, or do you see that it would be um, not so much and really the full funding is from your experience what you think is most beneficial? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, subcommittee member Musa, um, when we went through this again in previous assessments uh, from predecessors of mine, those four rooms, again, were public facing, benefit those kinds of things. And so that's why we went through that exercise with our public works department. When the Children's Museum came to us with the full scope of the renovation, those are included. But it's also other areas that, according to their um, renderings of Ryan Corporation, some shoring would have to be done to some of that basement to support the uh, second and third floors. So in my humble opinion, it would go beyond the scope of the four rooms, at least shoring up that dirt room that's in the slide to make that sound. Um, my guesstimate is that in another five years, the Children's Museum would come back to finish those rooms, and I think some work would have to be redone um, just because you know it would be a not complete package. That's why, again, if we had the full scope, we would have presented it with our full critical needs um, at that time. Thank you, that's very helpful. So it sounds like if it's done in the full scope, it would be end up costing us a little bit less than putting some of it off into the future where we have to go back and do um, alterations in that to the project itself. That would be my hypothesis, yes. Thank you. I know we do have a commitment from CEO Kate Wells to um, try to secure uh, those donations, additional funding, as, she, as we all know her to be an excellent fundraiser. Um, I did want to point out that under the critical maintenance bucket, there are some critical needs listed there as well for the Children's Museum. With the full scope or any of these three packages, are those needs satisfied? I just I wanted to raise that question for the subcommittee to, to fully understand that. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, it is possible in the renovation that we would have to, um, some of those items would have to be taken care of because we're dealing with ductwork, walls, et cetera. So some of those things could be taken off, but I can't clearly state that those would be on a punch list within the money the Children's Museum is getting or if we would indeed still use our critical maintenance fund for those projects as well. But I do know, again, like HVAC, Ducting is going to have to be moved. It's going to have to be readjusted. So it may be at that point to include that cost into this scope. May I make a recommendation for this slide that we have up here on the revised? So we've talked about a couple things, the Children's Museum of Phoenix expansion. And I'm not saying these are the numbers we are going to stick with. But if we were to plug in uh, the full amount of which has been recommended, not saying that that's going to stay. At least we can see what the uh, the total is going to be on the far right. I think that is going to help us in our deliberation. So just for clarity, what is that total number? Five point three. Five point three. Five point four. And the 1.2 for the Phoenix Center for the Arts that was recommended? That's the pleasure. Just to, for the purposes, we can put that into. We could try. Yeah. Okay, so put that into 1.2. We can adjust as, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I want to be able to play with the numbers um, in that way. I think that's a, a good visual representation. I also want to say that I was given a budget for the Valley Youth Theater needs, and the, the one that I was given, it, it comes to 13.014, yet it's 14.1 in the um, uh, in terms of this, this chart. So that's or over a million dollars discrepancy between what's being asked for and what the budget is, and I just wanted to understand that. 
Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, in some of these proposals, these organizations have provided things that they recently just received in terms of like the Children's Museum getting their Ryan Corporation, the Phoenix Theater, and their ADA work. And some had to use work that they had used from the past, like Valley Youth Theater, as the gentleman mentioned, eight years of trying to figure out this space. That budget scope, um, when we went through our work with budget and research and the um, public works and such has an inflation into it that is not accustomed, not accounted for into that. So that $13 million, when we went through our numbers, as I mentioned when that information was provided, inflation is included, and that's how we get to the $14.1 million. And Madam Chair, Mitch, just for clarity, assuming that the bond is approved by the voters, that work wouldn't happen for another couple years at which point additional inflationary factors may also be at play. Correct, and so that's why we've cushioned those budgets. And, and Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, in, in your packet, it, it actually was listed at 14089, which is 14.1. I have a question. Approximately, um, I mean, I agree we need the Latino Cultural Center, but a lot of these figures are based on a building that presumably is not going to be used. Um, what would you estimate or guesstimate would be the, you know, approximate cost of a building? I mean, we've got a lot of, I mean, we've got some figures at least for, um, you know, Valley Youth Theater. I don't know how many square f feet has been this dream for this center, but so much of the data is based on, um, I think poor data um, that I'm really concerned with the 21.7 mil being really accurate in what can be used in part because we do not have a nonprofit associated with this and even though uh, the Office of Arts and Culture has stated that they have the capacity I think that many nonprofits that exist today would feel somewhat offended if the city is babysitting um, a new nonprofit for such an organization, which is desperately needed. Um, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, subcommittee member Reiner, um, that I'll uh, do the two things. One's the cost and one is the community. Both have come from eight years of community input and study. It's not like it was just thought about in thin air. The site cost comes from the first capital improvement study, which was submitted to subcommittee members, um, that asks for a 35,000 square foot facility. That is how in our search for a facility before the pandemic, before monkeypox, before inflation, before the world went to heck, um, we had identified several sites, and one of those was the North Building that was identified by the ad hoc committee that also recommended that the city run this facility in tandem with arts and cultural operators to not duplicate um, programming, and those organizations were members of that ad hoc committee. So the site that generated these numbers fits within that scope. However, projects, all of these projects, uh, could shift in scope over the next seven years. And so if given this $21.7 million, the department with its um, partners would decide what the scope would be, whether it be a new construction somewhere or the rehabilitation of the North Building. In previous bonds, organizations' scopes have changed. For an example, the opera and ballet were supposed to be in one building things change. They are now two separate buildings and split that money. The money still went to those projects just in a different scope. So if the Latino Cultural Center is identified as a critical need at whatever price tag, we would look at that funding as what we could do again on a new site or on the current facility because right now we have um, a budget of $45,000 at the Arizona Community Foundation and $800,000 of leftover bond um, from the original bond to help with architectural design. So it, 
I would say that it is based off of the recommendations from the ad hoc committee in the second study, but scopes most likely will change, even if that is the location that it will stay in. Um, but as the community has pointed out in our first meeting, uh, that is not the ideal, but knowing we have $22 million with that extra money in the bank, um, you know, it's possible that we could have um, a really awesome center, whether it be the 35,000 square foot scope, or as um, some committee member Gutierrez says, the community is willing to fundraise to make this even bigger and better. So it's just a starting point, and again, all scopes could change on all of these projects. Madam Chair, if I could, um, you know, transitioning off a starting point, I think given that this was also our collectively highest ranked, I know ranking is a concern here, but I think based on the results of the survey, this was our highest ranked project, and we've got a recommendation from staff could we discuss this project now to come up with a, a recommendation, potentially, and the rank and a number? I, yes. There's agreement from the subcommittee to discuss. I, I just want to say one thing, because I had given um, you all my, again, it doesn't, our own opinions certainly can, can come forward, but I wanted to have some basic criteria established for for uh, and I gave it to the city as well and I haven't it's not been presented but I gave a proposed criteria for determining what recommendations are going to be going forward and I would like that to be discussed if you want to turn it down fine but it's something that I propose to have some basic criteria for making the determinations uh, <coughs> Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, I did have a chance to actually look at the rubric presented um, by subcommittee uh, Gretchen and looking over the <coughs> actual recommendations you provided, I felt as if um, some of the things within the language that we would be evaluating are not items in which we have set forth as expectations for the bond. So the ability to understand if they can fundraise is not necessarily something that I foresee for us to make as decision making. Also uh, leadership. Uh, we are following the guidelines of what we are to put forth when it comes to restoration and critical needs of the building. And so with that, I thought it would be challenging to be able to take those recommendations and use them as a scoring across. I think they very much are high level support for a um, grant committee, but specific to this, I think that we want to be careful of uh, evaluating subjectively someone's leadership and the organization's ability to fundraise to make a decision around determining if the project should move forward, understanding that the staff themselves has done the vetting process, at least in the beginning for the projects that were originally put forth read and also every single one of these organizations is fundraising so that's not that's kind of a moot point they're all fundraising well actually we have not heard from Phoenix Center for the Arts about fundraising yeah, they did say something about it she said something today about it in fact okay. Andrew, are you here still Gretchen I'd like to go ahead and give you the opportunity to read your list and then we can discuss as a subcommittee, um, as well as uh, the strategy that I put forward at the beginning of the meeting. Please go ahead. You want me to read the list? That, I believe that was your, was that your request? Yeah, I mean, nobody yep. else is doing it, so maybe I will. And, and I'd say it has been reviewed internally. I, yeah, no one said anything staff, to me, and so that I would, it would be appropriate to have done that in order for me to understand why you're not suggesting it. Right? I thought we discussed at our last we, we did discuss at our, our last, last meeting. Uh, meeting. Right, but it was just that I think there was a misunderstanding of what I was putting forth. Um, and I, I talked to the gentleman who, who, who said, you know, that he was not, he, well, I forget, I don't know your name. Is it Owens? Yes, okay. Well, th these are just basic issues that I think ought to be considered and before you're going to give millions of dollars to an organization, um, organizational capacity to complete the project proposed project within five years, demonstrated organizational viability and stability. I mean, these are basic things. Organizational leadership ability, organizational fundraising ability, demonstrated audience public demand for the project. 
those are just the, the five things that I thought should be the basis for making any decision about giving millions of dollars to an organization. Madam Chair, if I may, um, I, I appreciate the notion of trying to set a criteria, but I think this late into the process, we haven't had a chance to evaluate against any particular criteria like that to this point. So introducing a new kind of structure to this, when I would argue that if they were looking for leadership or sort of sort of ethereal things like leadership or fundraising capacity or um, you know other things listed there, I think it would have changed the presentation given to us. It would have changed how we interrogate the projects. Um, and truthfully, I don't feel comfortable evaluating against that criteria based on the information that's been provided to us to this point. And as I, so as I listen to those five, the first one, the project would not have come forward to us, to the subcommittee, if it could not have been completed in, in five years. I believe that was a requirement. And is it suffice to say that all of those requirements are being met or are, are considered met in order to, in order for that project to be to us at this point in the discussion? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, certainly the ones that were on the original list have been vetted with the city engineers, um, with staff, uh, those uh, various individuals. And I think um, the project from the Phoenix Center for the Arts, obviously staff has been having conversations so that there's an understanding there of what the needs are there that have been vetted with staff as well. So, um, you know, based on, based on those, um, those two areas, I would say that they've been vetted um, the projects could be completed within the five years, and they did take into consideration things that Mitch just mentioned, like uh, uh, inflation, et cetera. And then in terms of leadership ability, ability to fundraise, and I'm missing your last two. Audience. Who, who they're serving and the, the need in the community. And, and Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, you know, public benefit is, is something also that uh, was evaluated as we looked at these projects. Um, I, I don't know that we evaluated a high level of participation, because that's, again, hard to, to judge, right? The, the value to somebody in one area, it might be equally in an area that maybe is a smaller venue. It just, you know, that's very hard to evaluate as well. But we did not evaluate that piece, but we did evaluate public benefit. And I should say, too, that I had brought up the issue of um, criteria at the very first meeting, and I was told that I should wait until we began to discuss things. So that's why I'm presenting this today. And I would like to know what the criteria are for making a decision. Is just what we individually feel ought to be considered, or is there any, for our subcommittee, I'm not talking about what the city did, I'm talking about for our subcommittee, will we have criteria for making decisions? Happy to continue discussing. Additional comments? Madam Chair, I just also want to point out that the two points of leadership and fundraising did come from this group when we were asking, it was that Hail Mary pass to the organizations that presented at the first meeting to present their materials to be presented at the second meeting for recommendation. And we did ask about, did they have the capacity to complete the project? Do they have solid leadership in place to get the project done? Would they have the fundraising capabilities? And so those were vetted um, when we brought it to you for the second meeting to list here on these 10 projects total. So I guess I'd open it up to the full subcommittee. Are there any of the requirements that Gretchen is posing that we feel have not yet been answered or identified through the process thus far? I, I do, I do I have a question. Com oh, I'm sorry, finish that thought. Um, one of my, it's, it goes back to my question, is that um, we all agree that the Latino cultural center of whatever form is of highest priority, yet we have had no one from the community come and speak on it. Um, there doesn't seem to be an established board. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience because I was involved with a, a nonprofit that received bond funds for a new building. And let's see, it, well, I don't remember how many years it lasted, but it was the Phoenix Museum of History. They were ill-equipped to manage the building, even with some uh, city support. 
What I don't want to see is that this center, which we all agree is so important, will go down the tubes. And, and that will be devastating for everyone concerned, and especially those of us who here, are here now making this King Solomon-type decision as to who to get money and, and how much. And so, you know, I'm really concerned that because they got money previously and it didn't really go any place um, that this, we're setting them on a track for failure. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to be a party to, to that because I think it's an important part of our community that is missing, really missing. And so, you know, that's why I asked, you know, what would be the cost of a building? I mean, or at least the purchase of a, of a property. And I know that they change in midstream, but we can't predict that it will change in midstream. Madam and Chair, I'd, I'd like to speak on that a little bit, and I think Mitch, you can probably opine on that as well. Um, as being involved in the, the arts community myself and sitting uh, for several years on Chico, um, which is a nonprofit um, center for the arts here, um, the ad hoc committee that was, was uh, put together prior to this, it wasn't that many years ago, consisted of many uh, individuals and, and, and many nonprofits um, from within the community. And that research and that document that was presented to us in which I read it, and I also spoke to a couple of individuals that were on that ad hoc committee, um, they spent a lot of time and thought and process and came up with what their recommendations were for the Latino Cultural Center. And so I don't think it's that, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that we've just come up with this 21 million and it's the city who came up with it and there was no thought process from within the community. I think the reason behind having it run initially um, with the city involvement is to see who is it? Is it Kala, is it, is it Chico, is it, is it a newly formed nonprofit that can take this and run with it? I think what's really, um, I would say yes, there's a tremendous amount of buy-in from the community. There's a tremendous amount of buy-in and thought and time that's put in with the nonprofits um, within our community and that it isn't going to be perfect, but it's a start. It's $21 million, which is something that has been long needed for within the community. And there's been a lot of research done on it. Um, so I don't think that it's without thought or that it's going to be set up for failure. And those are just my thoughts on it from being involved in the community itself. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, thank you for those thoughts. Um, we did have members of the public at our first and second meeting um, talk about the value of the center. They did lament on the site. Um, but I will also say that in this first version of this in 2001, the funds did go to a nonprofit with a board, with leadership, that did say they could do these things, and it didn't happen. So trying it the other way of the city, much like a model of Pueblo Grande is a city-run facility with a friends of board, um, you know, it seems like that is why the recommendation from the ad hoc was to try it the other way. If the pandemic hadn't put a wrench in things, we would have continued on with the process, which would have been fundraising this bond presentation, it probably would have been a $60 million request. Um, but the pandemic did put a, a, a wrench in things, and so this is where we are here. But we are committed. Um, we have community members, civic leaders that are committed to this. Um, I wish I could have both what the re renovation would be and a new build, but we just lost momentum because of the pandemic. Oh, uh, Truman, I, I uh, want to reiterate uh, what, what's been said. I think that uh, there is little doubt that the capacity to proceed forward is, 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 is ready to go, that there is extraordinary enthusiasm to get this done. There has been some division over the site. 
uh, there has been some division over the site. But let, let me let me stress that the, the, the at this point, the lead entity that, that has been dis in discussions with members of the city council is uh, CPLC, is Chicanos por la Causa, uh, uh, a billion dollar entity almost, uh, uh, it, 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 operating in seven states and has the capacity to do that. It also has uh, an historic uh, site uh, that it has purchased, the Santa Rita Center, and most of the land around it, not all of the land, the remainder of the land is in city hands. Let me stress, not all of it. There's some plots still to be, to be. So, so that is a possibility, but, it, but I just want to assure that it's time, it's ready to go forward. Now, as to the, the, the North Building site, there is a lot of enthusiasm for that as well, if that's the only way we can go. But let me stress that there is a, a lot of us who feel that it should be greater than that. But it's got to be realistic. It's not going to end here with this recommendation. We've got to come before the Executive Committee. And then we've got to go before the City Council. Uh, and. And by the time we get there, all of these questions have to be resolved or it all comes to naught. And I guess at this point, we think it's, it's ready to go forward. And that's what we would like to see. Madam Chair, to that point and to support the other members of the subcommittee, I think um, subcommittee Owens as well as subcommittee Price have asked as we are near our last hour if we can begin the process of starting to go through and make a vote um, and come up with those amounts. I would like to support that if we can start that process now. I would like to suggest um, if any, everyone's in favor that we put the full funding in for the Children's Museum. I believe it was 5.6. Would, would that be? 5.4. Would that be doable? Just to be clear for subcommittee members, that value has been entered into the revised column on the spreadsheet, and it is being calculated in the cumulative total. But this so is not permanent. This is not final. This is just for discussion at this point. Correct. It is. Yeah. And I just want to say to your point, um, and that if we put in the 5.4 million, um, that would mean if we are going to support the chair's approach to get as close as we can to that 62, that means we're going to have to cut or reduce um, an amount somewhere else. I, my assumption was we were just gonna put some numbers in her as we would and then if we need to eliminate or change. So if we felt that it was a priority for the Children's Museum that we we do just plug in the, pri the price or? Yeah, we can. I'm just saying looking at the cumulative, that's all. If we look at the cumulative. But, but we, could we not decide later that maybe um, the pavilion stage is not needed? Well, I would like to make a recommendation that we actually um, support the $2 million we are getting from the convention center and put the Herberger Theater Center Pavilion stage for priority needs for the next bond. A so look for the future, excuse me. So with that, we would just be looking at cumulative kind of playing with the numbers from the 69.2 million. I just wanna make sure everyone's following that if we're supporting the chair's approach. Um, I, I agree with your recommendation. I, I do have a question though on the, uh, the 10 million. Did, did we piece out what, where all that was, was going? Did any of that ever come out of any of these numbers? Or, or are we ranking it so low because we don't really understand completely? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, that list was provided before okay, the- thank you, I missed it. Oh, it's okay. And you know, as I mentioned, with a couple of these projects, um, like the Children's Museum, potentially um, the Phoenix Theater, uh, some of those projects could be taken off the list just because of the way new construction happens, but I can't determine, you know, if an end of life air conditioning happens, like when does that happen? So, so this could come in, if, for example, if we were funding the Phoenix Children's Museum, the line items number you have under the Phoenix uh, Children's Museum, 
might come from either bucket. It, some of the work could come from the other bucket, but can't say that for sure. For sure. So we have a recommendation to move the Herberger Theater Center Pavilion stage to a future, future needs list. Essentially, we're moving it and looking at the one through nine projects. And Annette, if I'm following your train of thought, if we want to fund Children's Museum of Phoenix expansion at that 5.4, do we want to consider reducing the Office of Arts and Culture Facilities critical maintenance from 10 million to 5 million or a lesser amount in order to get us closer to that 62.5 uh, million, which is 12.5% of the 500 million? Well, I, it, could, it certainly could be a thought, um, considering the Children's Museum is in there, um, Phoenix Theater is in there, um, not Phoenix Art Museum, but there, there, is some, there is some overlap. Maybe if it's even taken to eight million. Madam Chair, if you um, put in the eight, can we just see what it looks like? Because again, we're in the process of playing with numbers, correct? Right, so we'll put in eight, and as you make decisions, um, a motion would be helpful, just as a reminder. Madam Chair, uh, uh, Deputy City Manager Erickson, are you ask, you're asking us to motion just as we sort of play with the numbers in the spreadsheet? Just as you finalize things. Okay, yeah. 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 I'm just, just, I'm just, that's just a reminder so that we don't lose track of that and we start moving things around. But when we're ready to make a motion, we should make a motion. Well, I think it was discussed um, by um, eliminating the Herberger Theater Center Pavilion stage and put it onto a futures bond project list. Did you want to make a motion? Um, I like to motion that uh, ranking number 10, the Herberger Theater Gold Bond Project. Second. A motion. We have a second. Perfect. We have two seconds. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. No, but Madam Chair, I just want to make sure as we are still going through the process, it looks like our overall numbers are about at 60. 7.5 million at this point. Other subcommittee members, are you following that? Okay. Oh, 67.2 million. Madam Chair, if I may, uh, it sounds like there is at least across the subcommittee broad enough agreement to potentially make a motion to also include the Latino Cultural Center at the $21.7 million amount, understanding that it is like the starting point for this process. But I'd like to make a motion that we lock in that 21.7 for Latino Cultural Center. I like second. There will be discussion. To, oh, you have to second. Oh, go ahead. Oh. You second? Yeah, I second. The, go ahead. Oh. The motion is to include the Latino Cultural Center at $21.7 million in our recommendation to the Executive Committee. And Vice Chair has second that. Second. Discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. In five years, that money will be expended there'll be building within the, the next five years. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, as long as I don't get hit by a bus, that money will get spent on the Latino Cultural Center. And I do have a point of clarification on that. What if those dollars do not get spent? We have another issue moment that keeps us from spending those dollars. Does that roll over into the next bond? Madam Chair, committee members, um, the recommendations of the subcommittee will go to the executive committee. Executive committee, of course, will make recommendations to city council, uh, which will go to voters. The final approved authorized bonds are subject to the annual budgeting process. So in the event that the Latino Cultural Center became infeasible or some other obstacle arose that prevented construction within five years, that would be the city council's jurisdiction to determine what would happen with that money, whether it would continue to be on the books for the future, um, or whether it would be repurposed to something else else within the voter proposition. Perfect, thank you. Madam Chair, uh, let me stress, that that's true of every recommendation we're making. Every recommendation we're making is going to the executive committee and then to the council. At any point, it can be adjusted upwards or downwards. I have a 
question too. Is there currently a board in place for the Latino Cultural Center? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, a ad hoc or a friends of board would be identified as a recommendation of the subcommittee um, as we put that project back on track. So yes, there will be an appointed and it would be governmental appointed at this time, like an advisory board. Okay, and you, you have, are you the staff person or are you, have you hired another staff person in the funding? I know that no bond money can be spent on any kind of um, a staffing. I mean, it's very limited in terms of what it can be used for. It's hard, cold stuff. So is, do you have proper funding for a position to be the director in, in lieu of a director of an organization that doesn't exist? We do have a position that would manage the development of this facility. Um, whether or not that person becomes the director of the center um, would be a future conversation, but there is money to offer support to this project. So you, you haven't, there's nobody in place that has been hired? No, because it's just a, a, a process at this point. I've done the, the load share of the ad hoc committee in the previous two years. So if we know that this project is moving forward, we will uh, hire that person. We've actually drafted the job description already uh, and ready to get it on the books. So the city is providing adequate funding to, to do this, to get a really, really good person it, in um, this position. Yes, it is a middle manager or deputy level position. Madam Chair and to the members of the subcommittee, uh, during the time, I think, of the second um, feasibility study, I was the chair of the Arts and Culture Commission, and I feel very confident of where things have gone with Mitch's leadership and where the last ad hoc committee have made recommendations moving forward. Um, I think it has progressed over time, so I want to provide support publicly to know that I feel comfortable that the Office of Arts and Culture will move this project forward in the next five years. Are we still looking for a second? Yes, so there was a motion. There was a second. Uh, we were discussing. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing one nay, uh, we'll lock it in at 21.7 as that is uh, majority consensus. Would we like to do the same for Valley Youth Theater? with their permanent home as we identified that as the second largest. Madam Chair, I'll motion uh, to keep value theater at 14.1 and a recommendation for the executive committee. Be here a second. I second that. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, 14.1, value theater, permanent home. Madam Chairman, have we reduced the uh, the uh, uh, I'm sorry I, I just uh, I just lost it uh, the critical maintenance of the, the, arts and culture. the critical maintenance have we reduced that to we, five million we revised it at eight but we could certainly take a look at it at five um, if we took a look at, Madam Chair, if I, we took a look at it at five in terms of the goal of arriving at 62, that would allow us to do that. So I, without objection, Madam Chair, I'd like to move that. I'd just like to say that I think that this money, this critical maintenance, is a um, requirement of the Arts and Culture Department isn't it? Isn't it part of your contra contractual obligation? And if we're whittling it away, maybe we're putting the arts and culture department in a situation where they can't live up to their contractual requirements. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, um, we also have our uh, general maintenance and our five-year maintenance plan that some of these projects could come out of. If we lost it, this does make that budgeting process easier. If we could have this bond funding, but um, as uh, my colleague in the Convention Center, we could find this money in other capacities, not the full $10 million, but we could um, find ways in our five-year maintenance or our general maintenance budgets. 
Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Gretchen, for your notes. I did have a conversation with um, uh, Director Benchaka specifically about this understanding that Again, having been on the Arts and Culture Commission with um, Subcommittee Reiner, we know that this has been something really important and critical to keeping that maintenance. And um, Director Menchaca did share that if we did bring it down to five, he would be okay with that or in alignment. So while I would want the 10 million, I support the fairness of us wanting to accomplish supporting as many of the projects that we have in front of us. We do have a motion to reduce the Office of Arts and Culture Facilities critical maintenance to five million. And just a reminder that, this I want to make sure we're all under the same understanding, we're not locking in where they rank. We're locking in the amounts that we're eventually ranking or discussing um, in terms of our strategy to put forward to the executive committee. Um, so we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Pardon me, Madam Chair. Yes. We did not hear a motion, or, or can oh, somebody um, clarify oh, who made the motion? Yes. Committee member Gutierrez. Gutierrez, thank yes. you. Sorry to interrupt. Vice oh, no. Vice Chair, second, Madam. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I, I have another question on another topic, though, just to, just to clarify. The Phoenix Theater Company, the ADA project, that 5.8 is kind of an all-encompassing for the project itself, and there was no other entities that were, okay. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, again, as uh, mentioned in previous meetings, if we had had the full scope, much like the Children's Museum, we would have provided that information in our critical assessment need at the time. Oh, Madam Chair, on that note, perhaps we should discuss the Phoenix Theater ADA process. So I'll, I'll make a motion there to uh, to include it at the $5.8 million amount to address the critical ADA needs um, at the Phoenix Theater. I'll second that. Discussion or questions? Yeah, I have a question sure. about the amount. I understand it's going to be an entirely new building, not just an elevator because of the situation there and that's not adequate. Is this for an entirely new building, big structure? And is this all of this needed or is there another way to reduce the amount and still provide the ADA access? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, unfortunately that is what held up the project. We felt at the city that a reasonable accommodation could be a lift or even these escalator stair things and with the city engineer the consensus was the additional building that would be built onto the building to accommodate the ADA. The um, internal term of Frankensteining it was not possible. Um, so this is a way to alleviate all the ADA issues for back of house. Good question. Further discussion? Other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So Madam Chair, can I point out at this point, we have voted on the Latino Cultural Center, the Valley Youth Theater, Permanent Home, um, Phoenix Theater, Company ADA Project, um, and we have received support for the Herberger Theater, theatrical improvements. We reduced the critical maintenance um, as well as Symphony Hall theatrical um, venue improvements from Convention Center. It still gets us shy of about $2 million if we vote as is. I have a question about the Herberger Theater um, Center theatrical improvements. That was, that was not in the initial list that was given to us. It was, a, it was one to be put down, to put to another bond in five years. Do we even want to discuss that? I mean, it, the, the city itself didn't think it was critical at this juncture. Um, so I think it warrants some discussion. And that's the same for the Arizona Jewish Historical Society expansion. That's correct. Both that's were correct. as future needs. Um, I think as we're, we're making our way through these numbers, we're awfully close to be able to put all projects forward as prioritized. Um, at that 62 and a half, but agree that, that that we should have discussion about both projects. Do we all agree based on 
how we went through the ranking in our heads, um, do we all agree that they should be prioritized or that we should keep them at, at future? Um, Donna, go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm speaking for the Arizona Jewish Historical Society. In five years, that building will exist. So it, you either give it the money now or they'll come back and ask for maybe for something else. But I mean, it's a worthy project. I mean, as, as uh, committee member Gutierrez says, I mean, it's, it's hard to say where number one is, and that's one of the problems with Survey Monkey. I didn't like it either. Um, but if you don't give them money, they're still going to go ahead, and they are going to um, they are going to complete within five years, probably maybe even sooner than that. I mean, we're ever hopeful, but it it is this money will help them reach a point where they can then get additional money from other big um, entities that will donate. So, I'm still for it. And I don't want to necessarily penalize a project because of the ability to fundraise. I mean, obviously we hope all will continue fundraising uh, with the monies that we identify. So it sounds like you are for keeping it as a prioritized versus a future needs. Yes. Um, not, not a future need, a now need. As a now need, as mm -hmm. a now need. Any further discussion around the Jewish Historical Society as a uh, prioritized? Madam Chair, I support um, Subcommittee Reiner's comments. Uh, with that, we, we could consider revising the amount or not, just depending on what we decide, but keeping it in as a, a current is my support and confidence for it to move forward. And why don't we have that same conversation around the Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements? Um, it's, I, go ahead. I think that um, the Jewish Historical Society expansion, um, it's, it's, I, I believe that it is a priority for the budget, whether it was brought in or it wasn't brought in later, or whether they can fundraise or they can't fundraise. Um, I, th I just think that it's important. And as part of the community as a whole, Funding this to $2 million, I think, is um, is, is truly a, a priority. Uh, if I had to prioritize something even over the Herberger theatrical improvements, um, I think it's a, 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 a just a good, uh, a, I, I just think it's a, a good work to continue to leave that inside of our budget. That, that's just my opinion. I understand from the rabbi that this $2 million is critical to future fundraising and um, their ability to uh, fundraise in the future. So this is connected to fundraising. Madam Chair, if I may, um, I too support the $2 million ask for the Jewish Historical Society's Holocaust Center. Um, it sounds like the majority of our, our subcommittee is in favor of including that at the $2 million amount based on what I'm hearing from the group. Um, can I make a motion to include that at $2 million? We feel we need discussion about the Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements first, or would we could, prefer to vote? Is that in, could that be something that could be held off? That could be what? The, the Herberger Theater theatrical improvements? Is that, that I didn't what, hear the first part of your question, sorry. Is, is the Herberger Theater theatrical improvement something that could be moved into a future date? On the current, on the original critical needs study, it was identified as a future need along with the, uh, the Jewish Historical Society expansion. Um, I'm, I want to be respectful of the process. There's a, a, a motion to move the Jewish Historical Society expansion into prioritized but I'm wondering from the subcommittee, do we want to discuss the Herberger's item as well as moving from future into prioritize before we vote on either or both? Madam Chair, in that spirit, I'll rescind the motion okay. for the moment. Uh, from just my perspective in, in walking this process with everyone, um, because the Herberger Theater Center was a future need and it was a recommendation by staff, I don't think we heard as much about it, similar to the symphony, but we know that those needs are just as critical and I think we've heard identified through public comment through um, staff um, 
comments that the needs of the Herberger Theater Center in terms of the theatrical improvements are similar to in line with the symphony with Phoenix Center for the Arts and I don't want to misrepresent what's been shared previously um, but I would also feel strongly about moving the Herberger into the prioritized. Madam Chair, you have my support and that I also want to uh, remind um, subcommittee members that we did get a commitment um, from John Chang from the Phoenix uh, Convention Center uh, that supports uh, 2 million of the 5.3 million, which would mean we would be putting for 3.3 million for the Phoenix, I mean, for the Herberger Theater S Center for um, the theatrical improvements. And that is the same. We are getting support from, again, the convention center for the Phoenix, I mean, for Symphony Hall theatrical um, venue improvements from their 8.7 million they're giving us three million, that would mean we would be approving 5.7 million of that if we move forward. Okay. I was just gonna make the motion that uh, we solidify, we lock in the Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements at 3.3 .3 and Symphony Hall theatrical venue improvements at 5.7 after the presentation from John Chan and staff recommendation. Madam Chair, very briefly, if we do that, just as a note, we're continuing to sort of shrink our options to get underneath the 62.5 that uh, you had recommended as our cap for our framework here. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that as we go forward. And I believe the motion is to lock in the amounts. We still need to motion to move the, the, the Herberger theatrical, theatrical improvements into the prioritized uh, as part of, we, uh, yeah, I think we need, let's start with, <laughs> let's go back to um, the Jewish Historical Society expansion, Herberger Theater Center and theatrical improvements. Do we want to move both from future needs into prioritized? So moved. Second. Further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That was for Rabbi Pluckin. Excellent. Okay, so what we have in front of us, the projects one through nine, are those that we believe should remain in or be moved into the prioritized. Um, and to Ron's point, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm forgetting who made what point at this, at this, this point. Um, we have $64.2 million in front of us on screen. And if all of these projects stay as prioritized or moved into prioritized, then we, from a strategy perspective, still would like to get it down to that 625 million to recommend to the executive committee. Um, and that is a difference of 1.7, which if we were to modify the Latino culture and drop it down to 20 million, that would get us to the 62.5. It's just a thought. Stop thinking. <laughs> You've done enough thinking for today. <laughs> All right. Madam I'll meet you. That's one you option. Know Other options? Yeah, one Madam, option is on the, the table. Main ingredient I am. <laughs> <laughs> one option's on the table. Other? Yeah, Madam Chair, the other alternative that we could consider among many is uh, that we were given several options for the Children's Museum, one of which was $3 million as opposed to a full 5.4. Certainly that would actually get us lower than the 62.5 you recommended, so we wouldn't need to necessarily reduce it the full 2.4 to get there. Um, but it is something on the table where we know that's a project that could be successful. Yeah. I would oppose that. I believe if we lock it in at 2.9, which was that, that middle of the three options, that would bring us to a total of 61.75 million. I've been doing a lot of number doodling over here. Um, so that's another option on the table. Further discussion? I, I would actually even recommend, you know, we give more than the three million to the Children's Museum in that instance to get to that 62.5 number that you'd right. recommended. Uh, so it would not be a full 2.4 reduction from 5.4 to 3, but rather uh, 1.7, which would get us to what, 3.8 or so, or 3.7 that we'd be recommending for the Children's Museum? Madam Chair, so I want to negotiate. Um, I can follow you on that subcommittee, um, Owens. Maybe 
3.5, I, I would like for us to consider a few more dollars for the Phoenix Center for the Arts project. I don't have an amount, but I would like us to consider more considering the conversation mm -hmm. that we have had. Vice Chair, would you be considering something like two or 2.3? Where's your, where's your number on that based on the discussions we've had? I'm not hearing all that's being said. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll repeat. Um, Madam Vice Chair, where is the number you're suggesting for PCA? Yeah. So we had a presentation, at, we have a, have a presentation of recommendations for 1.2. We understand Parks is moving forward with, right now, a firm commitment of 250,000 with understanding other things will potentially move to a million. Um, I'm supportive of the 2.9 plus for the Children's Museum, so would subcommittee members entertain me with maybe um, another 500,000 or take us to 2 million for the Phoenix Children, I mean the Phoenix Center for the Arts? If you take that to 2 million, I believe that puts us right at 62.5 and some change. Okay. Then I'm, I am asking uh, for support around increasing the 1.2 million for the Phoenix Center for the Arts Project at 2 million, but then where does that leave Children's Museum? I believe if we can just pause um, and ask to have this revised on the, the spreadsheet that we're looking at. I know it's helpful to have a visual in front as we're um, talking about these But we haven't numbers. approved it yet. Haven't I, approved I, it yet. I, no, I'm just opposed for to doing it until you have approved it. We've been uh, making changes to numbers to look at them visually. Where <coughs> yes, it's just those that we've um, voted on are locked in. And Is it possible to make those amounts a different color, those that are locked in, based on our motions to approve madam chair subcommittee Chris, members, I saw that we, we, we are <laughs> we are making those changes at your risk um, <laughs> <laughs> and your request <laughs> and we will but i do want to make believe sure we can try to highlight oh, those kidding aside yeah i want to make sure it's really clear now, so madam chair just to recap i believe the projects that have had a motion approved our Latino Cultural Center, Valley Youth Theater, uh, Phoenix Theater Company, Arizona Jewish Historical Society, Symphony Hall, um, the $5 million figure for critical maintenance, and Herberger Theater. So there are I two, I believe. I that believe we've motioned to include Jewish Historical Society and Herberger Theatrical Improvements as part of the prioritized, but we have not locked in the number. The number. Did we not lock in the number for the Children's Museum? We have not locked in that number okay. yet either. Correct. We, I, I believe we've also zeroed out the pavilion stage per vote. Correct. Yes, yep, we did zero out the pavilion stage through a motion. So while he's um, highlighting those, um, we can just take a moment and we'll get that taken care of and, and visually we can see that. We are not all watching you, staring at. <laughs> Now we really appreciate this. I think it's helpful to the discussion. So those that are being highlighted are locked in at the numbers we would recommend, not necessarily the rank order. And then up for discussion currently. Well, I'll, I'll wait a moment. I have two individuals conferring and verifying. <laughs> We didn't vote on Symphony Hall. We just voted, yeah, for a priority. Yeah, you're right, Ron. We're still working on it. Yeah. All right, Madam Chair, members of the committee, does that look like what you have agreed to the highlighted area being the ones that we've locked in on the dollar amount only uh, madam chair I, we did not vote on a dollar amount for the symphony hall we simply inserted the number including the additional city funds into our revised numbers for comparison but otherwise okay so we'll, we'll uh, take that one out then too okay. 
So oh. those that have been highlighted, we Madam Chair, in. members of the subcommittee, um, we actually do have record that that was voted on. Adam can explain. Madam Chair, subcommittee members, our record shows the first motion taken was the motion to accept the changes that were uh, discussed by Mr. Chan. Madam Chair, if it's, if it's helpful, at the conclusion of this deliberation process, we can simply have a motion to approve the rank orders and dollars as presented on the screen to make sure it's very clear what the subcommittee has recommended. Uh, if I may, mm -hmm. um, there would have to be a motion to reconsider those that you've already voted on if you choose to wait or you would have to move to reconsider those if you're gonna change them. So based on what we see on screen, those that are highlighted, we are on record voting to, to lock in those amounts. If anyone would like us to reconsider the symphony amount because it sounds like there was some confusion about whether or not we had voted to lock that amount in, uh, please make that motion now. Otherwise, we will move forward. And Madam Chair, we just need to highlight the 3.3 for Herberg because it was included in with the symphony hall. So we'll make that adjustment right now. Understood. Okay. That's locked in. Yep, so I'm not hearing the need to reconsider the symphony hall amount. Does anyone want to motion to reconsider the Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements amount? If not, that amount will also be locked in as a prioritized project. When you say locked in, that means there's no alteration to them or because there I would have some recommendations of altering budgets to accommodate a, uh, an amount that can actually move forward. We would just need a motion in the future to reconsider the amount. Okay. I believe we all feel we're at a, a good place with those that are highlighted um, in an order to get us to that 62.5. Is it something we can accomplish with the remaining three items that are not yet highlighted. Yes, so Madam Chair, if we could go back, if the subcommittee will entertain me at looking at um, increasing the Phoenix Center for the Arts project from 1.2 to 2 million and looking at the Children's Museum with whatever is left, which would be 2.9 million plus. No, I would, I would um, hesitate on that. I would um, leave the Phoenix uh, Center for the Arts Project at 1.2 and reduce um, the Children's Museum. I, I, I think one point, considering, um, all things considering, I think it's, 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 a, good, it's a good start for, for them. But that's my only, I'm only one voice. <laughs> I would support keeping the amount at 5.4. It's an organization that is serving more individuals than any other organization that exists on this list. So I understand and I support that. I think the challenge that we have is that we are two million short. So that would either eliminate um, Phoenix Center for the Arts completely if we keep them because we have now voted or that eliminates the Jewish uh, Historical Society expansion. Well, I think we should look back at the um, Latino Cultural Center. I support it, but I didn't support it at that amount. Okay. And I think that if they have the support that they claim to have, which I believe, you know, is true, um, if they do have that support, then they are going to get a lot more money in the next bond election because what we're being told is that 21 does not even suffice to cover the costs. So if we reduce that, that amount, they'll get more money in the next bond if if they have the momentum that they have. So let's do this uh, because there's been a lot of discussion. I'm hearing uh, support on a, a you know, couple different amounts. I believe the f the amount first put forward or that started this discussion is to reduce Children's Museum of Phoenix expansion from 5.4 to 2.9. Um, and so I believe, is there a motion? Has there been a motion made? I want to go back because I think uh, Subcommittee Owens mentioned that we would be below your number um, if we kept it at numbers, understanding that um, that number probably had considerations of $2.3 million for the Phoenix Center for the Arts. So what I am saying is that um, 
I just want to make sure we're looking at um, all of those numbers and still meeting you at the 62.5 million. So let's, to your point, finish our discussion on that, um, and then if we feel we should vote on it, that will tell us if we, if the majority feels like we should reduce to 2.9, if we should stay at 5.4, and then we would, uh, if we stay at the 5.4, then we could look at going back to adjust maybe amount that we locked in already. Madam Chairman. Yes. I, uh, l let me change uh, the subject just briefly here because I thought we had locked in uh, the uh, Jewish uh, historical expansion. And did we not? I believe we locked it in um, in the, the prioritized list because on the original critical needs study, it was identified as a future need. So we did lock in committing it to our prioritized list that we want to did put Did we commit it at $2 million? I do not believe we did. We still need to vote on that. Yeah, well, Madam Chairman, in that case, I move uh, that, that we do that. I thought we had. And so I move that we uh, lock in the, the, the Jewish historical at two million. We have a second. Further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Two point well, I would recommend that I would make a motion that we keep the Children's Museum at 5.4. That's my mo motion. I'll second. I, if we keep it at 5.4, there, there's going to have to be a reduction somewhere else. So you can't. Oh. Keep it at, at yeah. five point four. This and may as be I the previously mentioned, so me. I think we have to have further discussion before we move to include that because you have to discuss where you're going to take the funds from. Well, should I make a motion about reducing the Latino Cultural Center funds, which are they going to get more money in the future, um, to accommodate rather than take something away from either the Phoenix Center for the Arts or the Children's Museum of Phoenix. That's the, what I mean. The Latino Cultural Center has been pushed off for years and years and years. And you've got um, a very large population um, of the Hispanic community that's been waiting for something like this, particularly in one of the largest cities. So I understand that there may be uh, an expansion, which would be a complete expansion for the Children's Museum would be um, wonderful, but I also think that this $21.7 million is not enough, that they'll probably still need fundraising, and that this has been put off for so long, I think it sends the wrong message to take the cut from the Latino Cultural Center. I, I don't believe that that is, uh, sends the right message. Of course, I could be biased in that, but I don't believe that that's the right message, particularly if it has to do with the expansion of the Children's Museum, which already exists, into something that we're trying to build that doesn't exist at all right now. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, I'm, I'm not um, supportive of going back and reconsidering the amount for the Latino Cultural Center. We have questions for, for Kate Wells or staff related to the three options that um, we had put in front of us to consider before we... Uh, Madam Chair, could I uh, just raise an issue? The, is it 62.5? Is that a magical number? I, I don't believe it is. I, no, I believe nice. you have you have used a, a, a rational basis. Exactly. A, a rational basis for arriving at it. But that rational basis raises a question of what should go, from, what this subcommittee should recommend to the executive committee, and then it moves on, as we've described, to, to, to uh, uh, City Hall. I don't want to reduce the children's uh, museum. Uh, and I'm prejudiced. My granddaughter uh, is uh, is there we more than I'd like because I have to take her sometime. Um, uh, and I was waiting until she was to be 14, but nope, they forced me to, to take her when she's two. Um, I, I don't want to reduce it, and so that raises this question. I mean, are we locked into the 62? 
can this subcommittee willingly recognize that we are above the rational basis, and I, <laughs> I really commend you for that. I never thought of it. It's brilliant. Uh, nonetheless, uh, can we adjust your brilliant number by the amount? And so that, that's what I suggest. I suggest we keep the Children's Museum at the amount uh, and rec fully recognizing that we're going to have uh, uh, a larger discussion with the Executive Committee uh, uh, when the time comes relatively soon to defend uh, these numbers, and I think we should. So that, so that would put us at the 64.2 that we see on screen. That is absolutely an option. Um, I know in, earlier in our conversation, and that reminded us to be mindful of that 56 million, which was the amount in the critical needs study as recommended by staff. But again, we've had new projects come to us that could have been, should have been uh, considered at other subcommittees. Gretchen, go ahead. What about the Valley Youth Theater? I mean, they've got, as far as I understand, I've heard nothing to the contrary, they have that space until 2030. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, if that's something that you choose to do, we would have to have a reconsideration on that particular item. I'm sorry, but what does that mean? It would have to come up as a reconsideration because it's already been voted on. So just the, the process of how you have to do it is a reconsideration. Oh, that's what I'm asking for. Right, I, I'm just making a clarification. Prior to that, Madam Chair, Mitch, could we address whether or not they're in there until 2030? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, their lease expires on January 5th, 2030, and in, as uh, Chris Mackey mentioned in the last meeting, through the ASU Intergovernmental Agreement and the Master Lease, ASU can take that property between now and January 5th, 2030. There is a discussion that they would need it in the next five years, which would be 2027, but regardless, they will be out of that facility on January 5th, 2030. But also, doesn't it mean that ASU has to pay to relocate them and put money into the project if they do break that lease, which goes till 2030? If they take possession of it before the lease ends, if they take it after, they don't have to offer anything to Valley Youth Theater. And Mitch, just to clarify, again, for the timeline, for the sake of the record, the vote for the, realistically, the funds that we're talking about today would not become available until 2024 or thereabouts. Right. If we extrapolate that outward, uh, assuming that we're in the same time interval, the next bond funding wouldn't even become available until 2029 or 2030, or 2030 at, at all if we got to the next bond. Yes, so we would expend this in 2025 to 2029. So we would start the next bond process in 2027, and that means they would be facilityless if pushed into that next bond. But they wouldn't be facilityless if if the contract, which I saw, I mean, I believe that says that ASU has to provide the space for them. So they would have a space. I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to fund all these things. And if indeed the Valley Youth Theater can receive a portion of this amount to purchase property, then they can, you know, perhaps when they're in the next bond fund cycle, um, they can complete the project. Yes, so Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, ASU does not have to provide them with anything if they take possession of the building after the lease ends. The five year is a projection, and that five years has been a projection for several years. So um, it could be possible that ASU would have to give them a like for like, which would be assessed at the current value of the building, um, but it is still a crapshoot of when that facility would be taken over by ASU. Repeat what you just said, that if ASU takes hold or when the contract expires, at that point, ASU does not need to provide anything yeah, so if ASU says, we're going to start building on January 6th, 2030, ASU would not have to provide Valley Youth Theater with any kind of asset because the lease would have ended. So if that were to happen, if, they, if Valley Youth Theater is not included in this bond cycle where the monies would have to be spent by 28, 29, I think you said, by 29, then they could be homeless until the next bond cycle. Correct. Correct could be a couple of years it's a potential okay which is why it's a prior that's why they a future that's why we as the department put this project forward in this capital needs because even if they get an asset from that current facility 
it's not this amount. And, you know, I have only stepped into this role three and a half years ago, but this has been a discussion point in predecessors. And, you know, it's up to uh, ASU who is, determines when that facility of their new dormitories or whatever goes there. Um, but again, if they do not take possession until after the lease ends, that contract piece is void. Madam Chair, a couple of things. One of them is that uh, Michael Crow is not that heartless. And uh, uh, the following of the, of the theater would just make it impossible for the regents uh, and for uh, the universities. So I, I really don't think that's that's an eventuality we should worry about, but nonetheless, it's it's a possibility. So I just think we'd like to get to the bottom of this and simply recommend the 64.2 million. That uh, that I think resolves all of the loose ends that uh, that that still remain. And so I would like to make that motion uh, without objection, 64.2 minutes. Um, before you make that motion, um, <clears throat> Madam Chair and Subcommittee Gutierrez, I would like to say that if we are gonna move forward past the framework of the 62.5 and move forward with the 64.2 that we should recognize that we did, um, and I'm doing find or or supported with an extra $5 million from the convention center. I think that should be a part of our case if we're going over those numbers. If I may um, state for the record, I was certainly not saying that about Dr. Crow. I was just following the logic of <laughs> why it was a prioritized versus future needs project. Um, we do have a motion. If there's a second, then we should further the discussion just brought forward by our vice chair. Do we have a second for the 64.2? I'm sorry, a second for the 64.2? I second that. Okay. So let's continue the discussion. Uh, our vice chair just made the point that with the five million um, committed by the convention center, are you, so are you saying then that the logic there is we're really talking 69.2 at this point? Yeah, I, as, you, as you permit, I mean, excuse me, Madam Chair, as you present to the executive committee, I, I think that we need to make sure that it's clear that we have worked to find an additional five to present our numbers. Um, I think that could make the case stronger in the framework that you, the rational framework that you have put together um, versus not mentioning that. So I just think we should mention that um, as they are considering if they choose to change the recommendations of numbers uh, after it is presented to them. When we present to the executive committee, does that need to be disclosed? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, in your memo that goes forward to the executive committee, if that's what you would like to add in there, we certainly can put that in there. Madam Will the Chair. rank ordering be put forward? Will the rank ordering be put forward so if the committee, the um, executive committee sees that we've, we've ranked a couple of things below the dollar amount, that those would be the ones that would drop off? Is that what my, is my correct understanding? Unless I know that they can put anything they want to in it and not regard what we have said, but will the rank ordering go forward? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, it would be presented that way, but again, as you pointed out, um, uh, Member Freeman, they might make some modifications, but it would be presented from the subcommittee once you vote on that, which you haven't done yet on your rankings. Once you vote on that, that would be presented to the, sub, to the uh, executive committee from the subcommittee. And I would like to urge when you present to the uh, executive committee that it, to make that up that difference, that 1.7 million, that it comes from the ADA. That it is specifically earmarked for this major project having to do with, you know, because we're, we're asking for 5.8. So if they can contribute 1.7, Specifically, that brings us down to the big 62.5. Even though they say they can't earmark, I bet you they can. And Madam I'd Chair, like to see to, them do that. <laughs> Madam Chair, to Subcommittee Reiner's point, because that 10 million is over five years and it's really 2 million each year, that would be making a recommendation, I think, over five years to support, which I'm not sure um, helps 
support the Phoenix Theater ADA project as they need the whole probably $5.8 million up front. And we would be asking them to earmark seven, we would ask, be asking them to earmark $1.7 million of their $2 million to the project. So I just want to be careful. Of what, if, how we, what if in the memo in the presentation we were to identify the projects that could have, should have been okay. um, prioritized by other subcommittees, the ADA, neighborhoods, Phoenix Center for the Arts, parks? Uh, I think that would have to be a part of our argument for putting this amount forward, and it's a very sound argument because we absorbed it into our subcommittee as new projects. That's an excellent idea. Okay, okay. Um, so we have a, m a motion, a second, further discussion, additional questions? Can you yes, repeat what the motion was? Did, did, did you intend to reduce the ADA amount by 8.7? No, no, no. I was saying that it would come from that well, 10 million pool that they had in there. All in favor? Oh, the motion is um, to put forward 64.2 million as we have the numbers on screen. We have not yet rank ordered. We will move to that next. The motion is to lock in essentially all of the amounts for the projects for a total of 64.2 million. And we have a second. We've had discussion, questions. So I'll ask, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now we're approaching noon. We do need to still rank order our projects. And again, I think the survey tool was just was helpful to understand um, for each of us as individuals how we would rank these projects. And I think we are all very engaged community members and leaders. And I'll open up the discussion about how we want to rank order our projects. Starting to our left. <gasps> I, I move that they are all number one. They are not worthy of anything less. I second that. Okay. I'll open that up for discussion. Uh, perhaps the, the question to our, our city leadership is that I'll do it. Uh, permissible. <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, it is your subcommittee and your ability to do that. Um, what that does, does for the executive committee, then it doesn't give them any perspective on what you all thought was most important. Yeah, I, I concur with. <laughs> what about tiers? What about creating tiers? One, two, three tiers of how we would prioritize. No, I think that then becomes really subjective. Um, I mean, it's an interesting idea, but I think we all have our personal passions for for different things, and we may not uh, we may not agree. That's why I just suggested number one for all of them. Makes it real easy for us. I, you know, we're not going to. You're the one that has to deal with the executive committee, right? I'll be the one who who went rogue. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm checking for messages from. <laughs> Madam Chair, if I can, I'll, I'll go back to the beginning and, and just remind everybody that uh, we, the charge was to determine the highest priority projects, the values, and to try to put them in some sort of order so that it would be helpful to the executive committee. Can we I do think like by a ranking them all number one, we've done precisely that. And if you uh, can get all of those. We've done precisely what has been requested of us. And uh, so and therefore, uh, my second still stands. The, the know, pleasure of the subcommittee. Uh, Madam mean, Chair, oh, if you ahead. think about it, is that the, you know, the arts are always open for discussion. Everybody may not like it, but it gives you something to think about. So if we're a little on the rogue side, hey. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, we, we do have a task in front of us to, to rank these. And if I could, um, you know, my suggestion here would be that I think using the ranking tool as a starting point, we collectively... Uh, ranked Le Latino Cultural Center number one. So if I could suggest that that be ranked number one, and then maybe we work forward from there. Well, we have a current motion and a second, I believe, on the table for ranking them all as number one. Um, in the discussion period, um, a revised motion has been presented. Is there further discussion around ranking them all one? Additional comments, thoughts, feedback? 
the only the only issue I would see with that is um, there may be some projects that maybe we feel more passionate about. We could all agree on six, and if we don't rank them um, in some fashion, um, they could pick the our bottom ones. Um, I don't know. I think it's hard in this. Is I don't know if there's any. I, I, I know Mr. Gomez doesn't like Survey Monkey, but I mean, is there a way that it could be put through again, or we could write it on paper and and give it to you so that, again, it is subjective. But I, I would say probably my first five might not be that different than maybe you know half of the people here, so that there's at least something to go by, because otherwise it could be those that you know get funded that maybe we all didn't feel as passionate about. Does that, does that make sense? Because I think if you just kind of go in as one, then we really don't have any say on those things that we might feel passionate about. I concur absolutely with that. And, and to that point, when you look at the bottom, that would be the bottom three, if, if you mentioned those first six, and then looking at the bottom three, those are all staff recommendations. And I know, um, you know we, we also respect staff recommendations. Um, but we've had new projects come to us that, again, could have been within other subcommittees. So, so I think we should do some type of some type of ranking, okay. um, because I think we're probably going to have some crossover, and that was also part of our job. Okay. One more comment, and then we'll go to roll call. My my um, one comment is we've already gone through this exercise, and these are the rankings from those who have participated in the Survey Monkey. So um, I know we already have a motion out there. Um, but if we wanted to submit something, this is what we've already come up with as a subcommittee. So if we feel comfortable in what this is today in front of us, I think that's what we submit in order for go to the next step. Understanding that some of us did not participate in that and also that there's already a motion out there that everything is one. And I believe we need to do a roll call on that motion before entertaining a new motion and receiving Heads Madam Chair, that is correct. Okay. But I'll take additional comments first. Well, my, my, just, my comment is that we've already ranked them. I mean, that, that's what we have done. So if, we, if it is the consensus that we should maintain a ranking, that is, go forward with a ranking, to recognize that we've done that, uh, I'll withdraw my second. But I think the ranking is done. D does Unless this we're going to send out another monkey, a survey monkey, that is. And if we're not going to send out another monkey, then I think we've, we've actually ranked them. And I would withdraw my second and say that it's done. True. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll resend my, my first, my first, my, my, my movement on there. I mean, because one of the things is that when we've talked about bond elections and selling bonds, the, the last three are all improvements or maintenance. Those don't sell well. The other things people are really going to see, I mean, they would notice if the air conditioner goes out, but, but for the most part, the maintenance things are exceedingly important, and if we don't do them, it's, it's going to be a problem. But uh, the, the top ones, they're the, the top six, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's going to, those, those are going to be really easy to sell, and you just kind of slide those improvements in on the tail end. Okay, so we have the motion and the second rescinded. Before I ask for a new motion, um, I, I'm just looking at our list and thinking strategically, not that I want to cut the critical maintenance budget, but would there be strategy in moving the Herberger above so that it's an organization, so that we're, we're, we're ending with the critical maintenance bucket. Um, I mean, our subcommittee is so unique and different to all the others. It's mostly about infrastructure and city programs, and this is, you know, these are organizations that are delivering such amazing benefits to our community. Uh, and not that I don't want to cut Mitch's critical maintenance budget by any means, <laughs> um, but would like to discuss whether we change the order of eight and nine. Well, I would, I would, I agree with you. I think the, you know, I, I would certainly see the Herberger as number eight rather than, than number nine. I mean, 
uh, people associate with a building, when you just say critical maintenance, they're not going to read the fine prints. I mean, we know what it is, but I, I would certainly support changing Can I that ask order. for you to repeat, if you will, what our first ranking was and see how it lines up against this? Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, the rankings are in the order they were Oh, they originally. are still in this order. Yeah, the we only thing we them. touched so. was the dollar amounts. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I couldn't recall. Madam so Chair. So this was how we ranked it. That's correct. Oh, okay. But Madam Chairman, to, to the point about which of these will have um, greater, uh, to the point of which of these will have greater emotional impact, I just want to remind you that by the time this becomes a bond election, there will have been a whole set of polls, a room full of, uh, a room full of uh, finance lawyers, uh, putting all this together into perhaps 10 different questions. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that the emotional impact of, uh, of uh, critical maintenance is is ultimately a decision that we, we can make of where it's going to stand uh, at, uh, at the point of the election. M Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee, uh, I, I want to support that we move um, the Herberger number nine to number eight, understanding the comments from subcommittee member Reiner. And again, note that if, eight, if seven and eight move forward, they have support of $5 million from the convention center. So if they pick our top six, or there are questions about seven and eight, seven and eight are also connected to the convention center giving two million to one project and three million. So I just wanna make sure that that is noted so that would also be how it is probably shared and or presented. So it's not going out alone. I would really hate to reduce the um, critical maintenance, especially because the Herberger was not even in the top listing of five that were put forward by the Arts and Culture Department. I just don't think that, it, I mean, there's a reason they did not put it in the, the listing and deferred it to a later time. So I would just hate for Arts and Culture's critical maintenance to, to probably be not funded if we do move the Herberger up. Can I make a clarification, um, Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee? So if what, I'm, what I am sharing is that number seven and eight come almost together because of what um, we are getting from the convention center. I'm not asking for anything less than what we have already approved, but what I'm saying is that if it moves forward, those two have a case that come together for support from the convention center uh, moving forward. That's all. The, the question is about changing the rank order, not the amount. Mount, yeah. That the two that have support are just put together. I'm not actually saying that the Office of Arts and Culture, Cultural Facilities, Critical Maintenance um, should not be funding. We're just putting them together, understanding the support we're getting for those two projects. Madam Chair, I would be supportive of moving the Herberger Theater up uh, and switching it with the Office of Arts and Cultural Facilities, Critical Maintenance. Um, so you don't understand seven and eight? I understand seven and eight. Excuse me. Uh, I understand seven and eight. I, I'm not I understand what you want to do with seven and eight. Do you I'm, want to combine them? No. What I'm saying is that to support the chair's recommendation to move Herberger Theater theatrical improvements up from eight to nine, so that Symphony Hall and the theatrical venue improvements are together, understanding they both are receiving support from from the convention center. So when it presented, the convention center is giving $2 million uh, and $3 million to another project. Real technical question, but I think we need to clarify it. Um, I think everyone's understanding, but are you wanting to put the two, including their amounts together as a prioritized item or just in our rank order, 
have Symphony Hall at number seven, Herberger Theater Center, theatrical improvements at eight, and then the critical maintenance at nine. All right. I, I think that we should move to, I don't know if I can make a motion yeah, to approve, please. but my suggestion is that we make that switch and because this was our rank order except for that, that we move to uh, give this a go and approve it. I would second that motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to move Herberger Theater Center theatrical improvements to rank order number eight, Office of Arts and Culture Facilities critical maintenance to rank order number nine and approve total amount of 64.2 million. Okay. Yes. Any further discussion, questions? Well, so we're, we're not gonna take the department's recommendation that the Herberger be put, put back into another bond I mean that doesn't that that that's recommendation. not the motion on the table. No, I know, but if I know it's not the motion, but if you if you make the if you go forward and it's approved, then in fact that that is that is a part of the the decision making process. So I don't know why I, I don't really understand no, why sure. it's not part of the. The point that I that I brought up earlier is through this process we've heard from. Um, the director John Chan of the Convention Center about the symphony theatrical improvements, the Herberger. Um, we've heard from Phoenix Center for the Arts, and based on the the needs identified in these amounts, they're all they're all very similar, aligned, and therefore we feel it's important to move the Herberger theatrical improvement needs into the prioritized in order to have those improvements made in these first the, this, the first five year cycle versus wait to have it go through the process again in another five years. And I, that's, that's why I motioned to bring it over to prioritize versus future needs, which we all voted on earlier. Yes, and to that, Madam Chair, just uh, Gretchen, we have a commitment that was put in the subcommittee as well. So I've, we, we feel like that commitment gives it some headway from the convention center, the $2 million for the Herberger. But we have to understand that it's likely that the critical maintenance will not be covered. I would, I think we have to be willing to accept that. And also, I would suggest it not be called critical maintenance, but perhaps improvements. You know, if if everybody's worried about the the you know the words and how they are not sexy enough to receive votes. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, uh, again to um, Member Gutierrez's point. This is going to get wordsmithed a lot and, and modified a lot with the executive committee and the council and, and before it actually gets on the actual um, uh, bond vote uh, package. So We can rename that critical improvements. We can uh, put that forward as the suggested change, yes. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Do I need to repeat the motion? Madam Chair, maybe you could just confirm that what is reflected on the screen in front of the subcommittee is, in fact, what the subcommittee is voting on. That is the motion with a second, correct. Further discussion? Okay. And we will call the names for the roll call, um, if that's your pleasure. Yes, please. Subcommittee Member Musa. Subcommittee Member Freeman. We're not going to vote on the the, the re-ranking, or is this this is going to cover it all. So I couldn't vote against one thing and not vote against another. I mean, I don't really want to change the ranking, but um, I I do agree with everything else. So is that a nay? Yeah, I guess it is. I, I would say that if this motion does not carry, then we would entertain a new motion Correct. with uh, what you would propose. But the current motion is what is presented on screen. Okay, nay. Okay. Subcommittee Member Gomez. Approve. Subcommittee Member Gutierrez. Aye. Subcommittee Member Owens. Aye. Subcommittee Member Price. Aye. Subcommittee Member Reiner. Aye. Vice Chair Broughton. Aye. Chair Prius? Aye. Approve. Motion passes. 8-1. Eight, eight Turn to staff to ask if there are any additional 
there's more work for us to do at this point, or is our subcommittee work complete? I think uh, your subcommittee uh, work is complete, and I know you probably have some things you want to say to kind of wrap up. Um, and if you want me to do mine first, I can do that as well. I'll start and then let you let us let you wrap us up. Um, number one, thank you. Yes. Would you like to make a comment? Please do. Okay. I want to thank the IT department for allowing me to be able to hear all of this. Thank you very much. And I know we're past noon, um, but one just want to thank the subcommittee. Fantastic discussion. Thank you for walking every step of this process uh, with me and, and, and Vice Chair Broughton. I um, would also like to thank city staff and, and city leadership. Uh, there's an incredible amount of coordination and logistics that go into every one of these meetings. Um, so if you don't mind, I'd like to just quickly thank from Budget and Research, Genevieve Siri, Stacy. Obal, Adam Miller, and Chris Fazio, who have been here with us at the table, from the Office of Arts and Culture, of course, Mitch Menchaca, the director, as well as Anel Ariola, Romeo Rabusa from the city manager's office, um, our deputy city manager, Inger Erickson, Alan Stevenson, who is not here today, Grant Harrison, Nina Fader, Patty Boland, being at the table with us, and uh, Nina's been so helpful to us as well, uh, from the convention center, of course, director John Chan, Tim Merritt, Jill Zung, our IITS support, Carl Cassioru, David Uriarte, Uriarte, and Winston Waller. And I think I, I think I captured everyone. If I did not, I apologize. But thank you so much for your help and support through this process. And Mr. Madam Chair, oh, go for it. I was going to say we'd yeah. like to thank you for leading us in this process on behalf of the subcommittee. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Y'all just allowed me to facilitate. You were the, the decision makers in this process, so thank you. Deputy City Chair, Manager. Madam Chair, just to, to wrap it all up, the next steps um, include writing that report in the coming days, um, and then that report will go to the uh, Executive Committee. The Executive Committee has chosen to hear uh, this particular subcommittee's uh, report on October the 24th, so that's when we will be doing that as well. And, and I would be remiss uh, without saying thank you to the entire uh, committee too. I know this was a, a challenging situation. I think some great discussion happened. I really do appreciate all the support uh, for arts and culture in the community, no matter which department it comes through. Um, and I want to say thank you to the team that is here and the team that has been supportive out here um, in the audience as well. And I'd be remiss without saying thank you to Alan Stevenson who covered for me so I could go on vacation twice. <laughs> so. Um, thank you again, and um, I, I look forward to working with all of you in, in other capacities uh, going forward. So thank you. So members of the subcommittee, put that time on your calendar, October 24th. Hopefully we'll be here to provide public comment to support what we're putting forward. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. We are adjourned. Airport in the country.